No problem. Do we know where the, the Lotus crashed by any chance?
Okay, once again, big thanks to Fire Jacobs from the Century Karting for assisting the team to get here.
Good afternoon and welcome back to the South African Endurance Series. My name is Nadine Wilkin and we are coming to you live from Port Elizabeth at the Aldous Garanto Racetrack. We've all been waiting all afternoon and we are finally on the start grid to get ready for the start of the Round 3 of the SAE and Round 6 of the SAGT. Earlier on you would remember that I spoke to you and I pointed out the Janetta. Let's have a chat to the driver who made pole position. Sorry. Sorry Andrew, can we have a quick word with you? So yesterday Stuart White was dominating lap times. Were you surprised to gain podium today? I don't think surprised. I think we know we have uh, one lap pace. Uh, but I think the difference is going to be strategy and making the ties last. It's such an abrasive track. It's awesome to be in PE and obviously to be back at the SAES. Um, but yeah, I think we're just going to look, see what happens within the first hour and then take it from there. Well, I'm wishing you all the best. Good luck. Right, let's move up track and let's have a chat to Kolile. Kolile? Wow, a man that is in many places. <laughs> Kolile, you guys have had a new car. Tell us about the upgrades. You know, um, we had a bad start. Uh, one of the Lamborghinis uh, crashed up. early in the year. And we put in this new baby. It's been in the country now for almost two months. And this is our first race with it. We're quite excited. Uh, it's been doing very well. I've achieved good times here. It's my favorite track, and I'm quite excited to be back in this new car here. Now. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have you. Yeah. yeah, we did notice that you did have some trouble qualifying the first couple rounds. Um, so obviously, the new car is working really well. Yes, you know, I must give credit to the team. We, we've been investing a lot of time in building ourselves as people. We raced overseas, uh, we took the teamwork, we learned new things. We were a new team, we were a year and a half. We started from of cars, no team a and a year of and a half ago to where we are today. We are second on the grid. We, we, we must give ourselves a little bit of endurance. Wow, that's inspiring. Uh, tell me, is Stuart around? Can I ask him one or two questions? Okay. Stuart, can I ask you a couple of questions? So, there are a few international drivers racing today. Racing today. Does that make for a stiffer competition? <laughs> um, sorry, I asked with the with the whole lot of international drivers uh, racing today. Does that make for stiffer competition? Yeah, definitely makes the competition stiffer, but the objective stays the same to win the race. So that's what we'll try to do. We'll push our maximum in the first hour, stay out of trouble, hopefully, and then take the race from there. First hour is just to get in a good position, and after that, the race really starts. Well, I'm rooting for you guys. Wishing you guys all the best in the new car. Hope it all works out. Right, uh, let's look for Charles. Charles driving this beautiful Merc. Charles, you also ready in your car? Um, Charles, I saw yesterday that you were dealing, having some troubles uh, dealing with understeering. Have you guys managed to solve the problem? Yeah, look, um, I'm just quite constant learning uh, fast coming from. Um, right, actually, give me a thumbs up. Is that okay? Yeah, uh, the oh, team looked fantastic work two. yesterday afternoon and right, like this morning we might have actually a new car. So, yeah, it looks like we've uh, sorted out what we need to sort out and over. hopefully we can have a good race. So the rest won't start. Wow, that's the amazing. I'm so happy for you and all, all, all the best. Alright, let's move on. Now we're going to be speaking to Nick Adcock. Sorry guys, can I just get in here? How's it, Nick? Good afternoon. Um, so, you've got little experience in this new car. How are you approaching this race? Well, I'm trying one of these in Europe, so I do look well, but uh, finding a brand new car over the circuit has been quite a challenge. So, we're not the ultimate favourite yet, but so we're not in a bad position. Um, so, let's see how the race unfolds. I think we'll have to wait for the race to come to us. Um, we want a race, reliable, hopefully, and uh, be there, there at the end. Probably on the podium, maybe a win, we'll see. Well, we will be looking out for you guys. Good luck with the race. All right. Let's have a look for James. James is here all the way from the UK. Um, he's on number four. Francois. Oh, Francis, how are you? So, this is the 2015 winner of SAE. Um, I'm just a bit excited about racing against all these top drivers. You know, when you get to my age, you don't get many chances to shine if you like it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Well, you're definitely shining with this cute umbrella. 
Um, you mentioned to me yesterday that you only need one pit stop. Uh, sorry, not that you only need one pit stop, but that you only need to stop what, every one hour and 40 minutes. Could that be your key to victory? Yeah, so it, it could be. Obviously, the society is spent on the pits to back. And it's such a quick lap. You know, it uh, means that if you can save a few seconds in the bit, and if you'd only have to stop twice, which we're going to do, um, the others are going to have to stop every hour, it gives us a, gives us a small suspension of a chance to... We'll see what happens. Yeah. It's going to be quite exciting. Well, well done for those setting up those advantages. Yeah. Um, let me have a chat to McKeel. McKeel has been brought in as the A driver to drive alongside Sandro and Francis. McKeel? You're back from Europe um, and racing on SA soil and the SAE. Tell me, how does it feel coming from Europe, driving a, a GT3 Mercedes-Benz um, back to SA in a pull beam? Uh, it's always nice to be back home. It's lovely racing back at home. So again, it's been exactly one year. We checked the other day that I've raced here in PE. And obviously, it's a completely different car that I'm racing this weekend. But experience is worth everything. So we take whatever we can get. Well, it's lovely to have you back in SA. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. All right, now we've got quite a walk up the grid, but let's go. Let's have a look at some of these cars. You guys will remember Aldo. He got podium number three. Um, well done, Aldo. Good luck there, Aldo. And we've got Andrew Cubberth, also from the SAGT. Um, we are looking for Sun Mudley. Where's Sun Mudley? Here's the Marius Jackson team. Wishing you all the best, Marius. Make it happen. All right, I spot Sun. Son Woodley, congratulations on making podium for the AM class earlier today. You gave me some luck, huh? I'm telling you, definitely gave you some luck. Can you do it again for me? I got that beautiful smile. You said something. Are you going to win again for me? Are you going to make podium? We'll try. We'll try. P is a friendly city. Anything is possible. Well, I'm rooting for you. You know that. I'll see you on the podium. Okay. Now we've got quite a track. This is the Nathan and Roe team. Good luck, guys. Rooting for you. Um, Cara. Cara Hill. She's our only female driver. Wishing her a bit. Well, go girls. Girl power. Okay, now we're making it back to I'm still looking for him. So there was more than any fish and crackers worth of it. Uh, I looked around the corner, the car behind me seemed a little way than it was. Uh, so I exited over the space, so I ended up smacking off the road. And he, um, he wasn't able to stop before he hit the wall, so he did get quite a lot of damage. The wheel was detached from the car, and there's a lot of fan damage that occurred. So yeah, it was not the best, but I guess that's racing. Okay, well, I'm wishing you all the best. Hopefully, there'll be none of that today. Okay, um. Well, that's all for me now. I'll see you later in the pits again. Over to Prince and Stephen Shio. All right. Well, a grid stacked for the SAE and SAGT and also our sp uh, one-hour sprint dash that's happening as well. we got three races happening at once and i gotta say i'm really excited for this prince couple of new cars out on the grid we've also see the the pill beam coming back which is always great to see the Jan janetta out on circuit as well yeah. out in front with andrew rackshaw behind the wheel yeah. and then we've also got that novo proto np02 brand spanking oh, you out it looks the box fantastic. it looks fantastic that's probably one of the best liveries i've seen on any of the cars we have on our grid here but talk about variety. I mean, I'm looking at, we also have in frame at the moment, the Dolphin, pure plain white Dolphin, the number 76 there. There's definitely variety, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, Oliver in the back, going to be having a bit of fun with BMW. Yeah. It's always good to see things like that. But it's going to be a quite a sack field. A couple of the guys, South African guys, jumping back from overseas to come and have a bit of fun with us in the yeah. SAE, SAGT, which is going to be um, a, a, a fantastic fantastic run i think and i can't actually wait to see how it's going to work out very very interested to see that uh the janetta in practice was getting outpaced by stuart white in the lamborghini qualifying a bit different story but as we heard andrew actual say that it's going to come down to strategy 
fuel management, tire management, who will be able to get it down to the yeah. wire. And Stuart White, with huge confidence that they, they'll be able to pilot that Lambo right up to the front. And considering the championship is currently in the hands of Charles Arangis, who yeah. is back in the Mercedes AMG GT3. So he's currently leading the championship, but and starting a little bit further down the order. Did you say Charles Arangis was racing overseas recently? Yes, he was actually racing in the Porsche Cup. So we have got Carl Potemba, okay. who was racing overseas, yeah. Stuart White, racing overseas. Jeez. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on, and we have got guys that have represented the flag yeah. overseas going, hold the phone, I'm coming back because I want to be part of the amazing series that we're going to see. We've got essentially three races in a four-hour time period. We've got the SAGT, which are out there. We saw Silvio Scribanti. He's out uh, trying to chase down the lights of uh, Michael Steven, who will be also racing in the SAGT and uh, the One Hour Dash. So they're going to be having a bit of a of race. So you'll see the cars go out after an hour. We'll see some of the GT3 cars parking it in the pits. Yeah. They will be done with the SAGT One Hour Sprint Race. Then also the One Hour Dash will be done and dusted. Yeah while our four hour will be continuing i also want to point out that our class e at the moment is very very stacked that's something we need to keep an eye out on as well and it's going to be interesting to see some people jumping out from one class to the other or at least from one uh duration of racing to the other michael stephen jumping out from the uh, one hour uh, segment of the race going into the calyx uh, super cup car yeah so going out from the lovely the beautiful and as you can see and shot slightly to the right hand yeah. side the inter african colors of the audi r8 and then you jump into the super cup that's going to be basically well going to yeah. you downgrading the side yeah. of the fuel ball is a little bit high for the audi r8 so you're going to drive it into the super cup and that's going to be very very good yeah. and we've got three super cups out there bw yeah. super cups which is great and the Kalex car, now third one, but brand spanking new out the box because it's still in no livery, just got a number on the side of it and it's going to have a bit of fun. So keep an eye out for that. So as they make their way through, Prince, this is going to be a challenging one for the drivers. Our SAGT are going to have to try and carve through the field. And we did talk about it, of how they're going to work this out because now you're not dealing with just a couple of GT3s on, you've got varying power. You've got the Backdraft Roadsters, you've got mm -hmm. the Nash, you've got mm -hmm. the Genetas, you've got the Junos. You've got so much going on that you're going to have to battle through, and you're doing sub one minute on the track, much like our prototype right at Geneta. But Stuart White, you saw, was pushing extremely hard, and at Cape Town and at Red Sports, in the middle of the road, and Charles jumping back into the mighty of I can't wait for this, but at the same time, I'm extremely nervous because this is going to be real, real action for, until the hour is done. So, you know, this is the thing. You've got a varying set of drivers. You've got two to three drivers in the car that are in, in the SAE, but then you've got a single driver for the SAGT and the one hour dash. So that's something to be aware of. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how Mike even navigates. He does have a weight. Can you call it a penalty? The the punishment that comes with success is caused slightly heavier, is it not? He's got 30 kgs yeah. of Alice. Silvio Scrabanti sitting with 20 kgs. Yeah. Aldo sitting with 10 kgs loaded into their car for the SAGT as a success ballast. So that's going to also add into it. And as we take a look at all the cars, varying types from prototypes to purpose built race cars uh, that are just more of your GT looking. And then you've even got the Roasters, the Class E's backed off Roasters, which are one of my favorite classes. Oh, it's incredibly yeah. competitive, yeah. and it's more affordable. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. Uh, motorsport at, at almost close to at cost. Close to at cost, I would say. Yeah, that's it. Uh, 
it's going to be really, really great. So, build, a, build of heat into the tires, the brakes. You've got some heat into the carcasses of the tires. Getting ready to go. We will be going in a little bit into the dark. So, that's going to also throw a spanner in the works for our SA GT and our SAE, along with our one hour dash. We have got roughly 28 vehicles on the circuit at the moment to go and battle it out. Pace car peeling away, and all eyes are on Andrew Rashaw and Stuart White picking up the field. Charlotte Renji's in third, and then you got Michael Stephen leading the SHT and the, the Dash lying in fourth place, looking to try break away as early as possible. One corner to go, though. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to round six of the SAGT and round three of the SAE here at Eldo Scrabanti at Quebec as they line up, waiting for the lights on. As soon as those lights go off, then we are racing. Hold, hold, hold. Wait, and away we go, putting the power down. Stuart White's going to be aggressive, going to try to go around the outside, but it does look like Andrew Rashall utilizing the power. He's trying to pull away the Janessa lead to the middle of the circuit. Stuart White backing down. Michael Stephen, 4 to 4, which all around you, all around you, back down. And here comes that Nova. And having a great run trying to go and close down the distance. So, this is going to be interesting as we've seen the guys really battle it out. But Nick Adcock's not going to hang around too long. He's going to try and get past. He wants to get a little bit closer yep. to the likes of Jeanette and Stuart White up ahead. Yeah, it's quite a good negotiation. Since you're racing some people, you're not racing others. And if you stand between the two people, you're going to have to try and navigate too much here around the middle of the night. I just like he's already in a really good spot. They seem to, to have dealt very well and negotiated a decent 50 50 between the club and the range. Pretty exposed to those great boards for us. Seems like it came out to me. There was definitely no room for error, and there goes the full beam out wide as it looks like the Alma Clarence making their way through. That's his decent roof. You can see Rolf trying to move his way up. Matthew Nash making his way around, trying to get a little bit more power. So Nash also having a great point. But as they run, notice the tail. And take a look. If you can't think of a better looking site, then I don't know. Because honestly, seeing the variety that's in this and the battles that are going on. Silvio Scabanti trying to make up a bit of time. He is caught up behind Nick Adcock. And you can see how he's battling with the turbulent air coming off that Nova. And we'll have to try and figure out how can he get past or if he's going to just utilize the toe to get a little bit closer. Remember, the SAGT have a mandatory pit stop. They have to stop, get the wheel off, the wheel back on. And they have to do that within the hour where the SAE, they can keep going out of that mark. So there's a definite thing to go on for. But the SA, the dash that we've also got, the hour dash, the guy's going to have to deal with is what's going to come into place. There's so much to race for at the moment. The lap times starting to fall and it does look like Luftuk, see he's trying to make his way up and there is F6, he's put behind Bill, Bill B. as we see the VW Motorsport car, there's Kalex being chased down and that's uh, Schalfusser in the number 50 car, he is trying to make up a bit of ground as well in the Super Cup, right behind the Kalex machine it's going to be an absolute monster of a battle and uh, there we go, no replacement for displacement, the sun will be making no, no. quick work yeah. of the VW Motorsport car one thing I want to give it up for the Super Cup cars, even though it doesn't matter if it's the Super Cup, but it's hard cars, they're able to corner very, very well as the guys battle their way through. Our Class E currently on, our PBL team going and having a bit of fun with Rose. But here we go, here's our Juno onto the back of Eldo Scranti at the moment. Eldo trying to get a little bit away, he called it his ATT, and uh, see how that Juno is tucked up right behind the rear wing trying to utilize the slipstream and at the same time that's going to help them out in the race you want to utilize everything you can to get a little bit more of a run yep including your opponent's racing line the foot is completely at the moment i think both the see is that isak's piece yeah i think isak's piece is probably going to make uh, a bit of use of the mjr in front of him at least for the time being it's interesting to see how everyone is going to be responding to temperatures it is close to sunset, quite close to sunset over here at the moment, and temperatures will be dropping. At the moment, you're trying to go the opposite way, trying to get your tires and your brakes as quickly as possible. Um, with the knowledge of the track, do you think that's going to weaken this early on in the race? 
Not this early on. Oh, as we see, that looked to be the pull beam going and touching a little bit on the dirt, trying to get himself back going once again. Uh, I don't think the, at the moment they're going to feel it, but a little bit later, as we get it past that hour mark, everything's going to pull down. The wind is picking up around the circuit. That's also going to come into play. If you've got a very light vehicle, like the Genesis pull beams, and uh, also like the low blood, also that, that way, very, very light vehicle. So every time there's wind coming past, they can feel it. Anytime uh, one of the bigger cars come past, it creates turbulence, and that you can feel that as well. So since you're in a car that's under one ton, compared to the rest of the field, you're going to get a, a big feel for it. So you guys are going to have to be well aware of that and making their pit stop strategies. As we heard, the track very, very abrasive to the tyres. So yeah. over the four-hour mark, yeah. we will be seeing the guys going and swapping out the tyres, trying to figure out what can work for them. And uh, you know, will we see a tyre change, or will we see guys try and get those guys in the whole four hours? I know I can say GT and a hard crash, they're going to be battling out. But there's our BDR racing Porsche. Has got, uh, looks to be Mr. Hill ahead of him in the Aston Martin. This Money Penny, as it's been nicknamed, going and battling it out as reference to the 007. You've got to love an Aston Martin. And uh, there is our number 33 car of SXP is trying to close down the gap to the MJR racing machine just ahead. Charles Rangis now has caught up into the back markers. And this is what I was worried about. Yeah. Back markers coming into play. Silvio trying to make up some time. But you can see there is no room for error through the infield. You're going to have to play for the leader, try and get a little bit more drive and slingshot your way yeah. past. And you got managing to do it. But unfortunately, Soldier's Grunty has got a massive closing back draft right. And will have to back off as much as possible to try and maneuver his way around. So this yeah. is going to be a very, very difficult time for the guys to power their way through. Yeah, there's no replacement for displacement. I mean, if you look at how short that distance Silvio Scrubati made use of to actually get past the back mark, was quite impressive. A lot of exploration has done this. Then we have having to modulate himself and control himself quite often and quite frequently, it seems, because if they are already starting to lap the number of the back market, first of which was the Dolphin. I think um, he was probably the first back market he got from the rear uh, of the field. That happened pretty quickly, but it seemed uh, Pretty smooth the transition. As you can see, you've got a neat row of back drafts to the left hand side while the bigger machinery runs all the displacement and making the way around. On the right, then that was a very close, but very neat because the back, <laughs> back drafts also had to consider they're racing each other. The number two there, having to close the door on um, on, on um, the, the bright orange uh, back draft right behind him. That's Tom Pretorius going yeah. and pushing as hard as he can. He's going off to CJ Blackman at the moment, really trying to go and get a little bit more of a drive. So. That's something the guys are going to have to keep an eye out for. But as they maneuver their way across, I do want to point out Andrew Rackshaw so far has put in the best time of the race before running into back markers was a 6.052 in the Ginetta, which is just mind bogglingly quick. As we see the VDR racing Porsche playing and making its way through, followed by the MJ, MJ on the racing machine, also doing everything he can to try and maneuver their way through. But this is where it gets tricky. Oh, oh, oh he's up, please. And they stop it in time. Oh, oh that, no. That's from the barriers. Um, I hope yeah. he's okay. Ooh, that looks massive. Is he okay? Is he okay? He's good. He's, he's moving. He's no, moving he's good. Head. He's fine. The he's thing, in the car. The thing is, you oh, got to wow. bring up, these cars are extreme. You know, safety in these cars. Yeah. You can push them on a tape and you will be fine. You can walk away, dust yourself off and go. And trying to restart the car, you can see the flames Thanks, coming yeah. out the back as it's overfueled. Yeah. But that is a McLaren broken and in a bit of a precarious spot. So, you know what's going to come out? Your favorite friend. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your oh, favorite sorry. friends is going to come out. <laughs> These things, just because I called out pretty much all the yellow flags and last year's nine hours. Sorry. Safe car, even at red car that's coming out and that's it but through the final corner you can see yellow flags put up he's gone off quite far yeah. off into the barrier but yeah. what happened was trying to get past all the back markers and unfortunately there we go safety car called out so SXP is trying to get past misty's brake yeah. marker shot up the inside was lucky to not catch any other car into it and i think everyone took a deep breath but safety car board is out no overtaking is allowed you're gonna have to follow 
behind the safety car until it's up and going once again. So this is going to be a bit of an interesting, and what we thought for our SA GTS and uh, one hour sprint, a safety car is kind of just throwing the cat amongst the pigeons for them. Yeah. For our four hour, it's at the worst possible time because it's only nine minutes into the race. So yeah. you can't even utilize it at this point to get a little bit more of a jump. Now, unfortunately for Isaac Speeds, he in the uh, sprint category, in the one hour dash, he is on the trailing end of the championship. So he is not going to be happy at all. While Michael Steven Luke to see uh, Rian Gordma as well as Paul Hill in Miss Money Penny over there are pretty much um, all systems as 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 expected. They're enjoying something they who is that? Is that Michael Steven in the pits? Michael Steven doing his pit stop. Oh so nice timing, nice timing. Remember I told said with the SAGT they yeah. have to do one mandatory, mandatory pit yeah. stop. The best time is now. Well that's it, you've got a yeah. free pit stop. I wonder how many people are gonna follow suit. It looks like I wonder how long this is gonna take to clear as well. Yeah, I'm uh, for SXB's climbing out the car, the door unfortunately jammed on the driver's side. So, uh, you know, he's going and taking a look, but that is a oh, that's just a heartache of a sight. And yeah, oh, yeah. you can see putting his hand on his head. I don't blame him. I mean, yeah. it's something you really don't want to see such a magnificent car, but you know, it's a mistake that can happen to even the best in the world. We've seen it happen. Uh, but SXP is climbing out, and you can be sure that car is going to get worked on, put back together, and we'll see it out for the next race. That is for certain. Uh, but at the moment, there's one McLaren that's uh, parked off to the side, unfortunately. And SXP is all over. So, now, yeah, there's maybe time to fix the car. There's also time needed to fix the tire barrier as well. Now, however long that takes is going to make a difference as to, I suppose, the thinking of, especially guys competing the one hour dash and they, also the SAGT and also the SAGT um, to see whether or not they should take advantage of the of time which I think that's a no brain at this point Michael Stephen has already said the first time he's had regards to the journey and get over and done with I think it's going to be a lot of the teams putting their SAGT and uh, the one hour dash the SAGT um, classically to come in during this period where they're repairing the tower. Well, we saw Sun Mudley and we saw the likes of Solvius trying to pulling into the pits, our safety yeah. car, allowing the, the back cars to go by, picking up the leader, which is Andrew Rackstraw in the Janetta. He's getting chased down by Stuart White as they maneuver their way through. So they're going to be sitting behind. And at this point, you've just started the race, you just got excited, you got going, and everything slows down. As we see Andrew Coppert and the likes of Aldo Trabanti getting up behind. They also have an opportunity to go in the pits. It does look like Aldo is lining himself up to get into the pits. Andrew, on the other hand, is on the far left-hand side, so he's not going to duck into this. Will we see the Lambo going in to utilize the cheap pit stop? Uh, it doesn't look like it, but I'm just double-checking. Is that the whole field? No, nah, there he is. He's not there. It's not there. So he's dived into the pits and left yeah. Andrew. So he's yeah. baited that into it. But the free pit stop has played into the favor of Michael Steven and Silvio Scribanti because they've done it now. They want to go out the SAGT to go for a bit of a run. So let's see how this is all going to turn out. The repairs being done to the barrier. There's Eldo coming into the pits. Up, down, and away we go. Uh, and the guy's looking a bit confused of why he hasn't dropped clutch <laughs> and go yet. But it's just, it's difficult to get those cars going. It's, I, I've got told how to start that car. Yeah. And all the different things you have to do to release the brake, to get it in gear, to get it going. It's not just put your clutch in, put it in gear and go. There's actually, I think it's like, you have to push, you have to pull the button up, you have to hold, hold the uh, clutch in, you have to hold the gear to go engage out of neutral into first. Then once it's engaged into first, you then release. You've got to make sure that it doesn't fall on the way out. It, it's quite a procedure to get those going from a standing yeah. start. Yeah. And especially, they shut the car down. So it's not just turn the key and go, yeah. or push a button and it yeah. all fires up. You yeah. have a system that you have to follow through. So shutting down a car of that caliber is not really ideal compared to our normal road cars because it's a bit of a mission to get up and get yeah. going. So it's not just a simple, easy thing. Yeah. Once you get it up and going, get it going and try to join up the field as quick as possible. But a couple of the cars doing their pit stops early on. Rolf Dupacito, though, is going to be taking a look and see if this is unfortunate. 
landed in the wall and it's got a problem. I want Pretorius out for the, the backdrop of Roadsters. He's been on a great run. But there's a beautiful shot of our tie wall that's unfortunately broken. The guy's taking a look. He's supposed to be taking a on look to the rest of the field. And I'm sure this is not quite the grandstand CT wanted to have. He wants it to be not in the pits going and taking a look. But it's been a it's been a rough day for this side. Because you think of it, round five, he had to retire before the checkered flag. Yeah. Or and whatever. We, and we didn't quite find out what the issue was there. Yeah. And now, unfortunately, that McLaren retired. The in the hour. early hour for the for the SAGT yeah. and the dash, and the so, dash yeah. so that's unfortunately going to happen. But now the drivers are starting to wonder what do they need to do. You got yourself hyped up, you got the green flag, you got racing, you really drove your way through, and now it's all slowing right down. Those yeah. tires are cooling down, the brakes are cooling down, the drivers are starting to calm down. And we're still waiting for a repaired tire wall. So this period could last quite some time. Um, and eating away at the SAGT and one hour dash phase of this race, the two are dovetailing, of course. It's one hour out of the entire four hours. So after the hour mark, a number of these races are going to peel off and have the four hour continue with a good 90% of the field. So it's going to be interesting to see how long this eats into the one hour segment of this race. I do want to point out it took three laps for all our first two cars to catch up to the back of the field yeah three laps from start yep. to lap three they were in the middle of the field yeah they do i mean you take a look of a 56 seconds around not 56 minutes 56 seconds in 2.4 kilometers okay yeah yeah it puts things into perspective and it's a more perspective we're a quarter of the way past the one hour segment of this race already quite 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 some time has actually gone by already i think we've covered we've got four or five laps under the safety part and it looks like it's always clear of that tire in the meantime a lot of brakes moving down a lot of tires moving down i wonder what's going on throughout this and it has to continue to recover some points and, and something for the ultimate outlaws team I know you're particularly heartbroken, Steve, to see one of your precious McLarens in the tire wall. I can see your faces a bit. <laughs> Are you holding back the tears? I'm going to shed a tear or two, that's for certain. Um, unfortunately, the it's never nice to see a car busted up to that extent. So, you know, that, that's... Unfortunately, when something goes wrong, yeah. it goes wrong. It goes wrong extremely quickly. So to something it's unfortunate yeah yeah it's a high stakes game and it's exactly what you can expect a good chunk of the time when it comes to this level of racing it's the risk that comes in. and it looks like uh it's that species ran out of space ran out of tar for him to utilize his brakes recently trying to get past the uh back markers there uh roof to perceive pulls in his pissed up he decided to take advantage of this period as uh and i had a student i had anticipated it's quite a long uh, safety car for so we might as well take advantage of what's going on. That was a clean one. Nothing too nothing too shaky for the team to handle. Very well uh, executed there. You got one of the Mercedes AMG, AMG uh, GT cars there pulling up the rear. He's got a lot of back markers to get past. Five back drops in front of that AMG GT car. There's a bit of work done there to clear and get up opponents. I think the nearest nearest uh, rival to that AMG it's alone after after all of those back markers. How long this is this driver's gonna have to take about four or five years? Five back markers in the end are kind of shot there until the case of all those fights is quite a bit of work. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a, a difficult one. It's gonna be a long safety car period at this point, ladies and gentlemen. The recovery truck is getting it sorted. Looks like they have repaired the tire wall a little bit, get it going. But uh, the recovery truck trying to get the car back on, you know, get it back to the pits. And, uh, well, there's a couple of mechanics that are going to require a bit of work. But it also shows you the how what the angle of that truck is, considering they're having to take logs underneath the front wheels just so it doesn't go and, yeah. you know, bottom out completely uh, to try and put it onto that truck. But that's how low these cars naturally are. It's fantastic. Amazing. Uh, I just, it's honestly a, a stunning sight to see. Yeah. And 
considering the field that's out there. We've got prototypes, we've got GTs, we've got we've got purpose-built race cars, uh, purpose-built GT cars, and then we've got like your backdraft roadsters and your super cups, which are more of the like you can they they not really as purpose built they race cars yeah, yeah. uh but they they definitely not you know all go go through a wind tunnel and everything but yeah. then you got the likes of our bmw at the back which is uh, got oliver and it's at the moment who's having a great run that's oliver hinatus who's actually the the slowest car in the field and it's actually a road going bmw that was stripped out put a roll cage in Go and put a, a racing seat, racing harness, and a, and your, <laughs> just it's it's a road yeah. car that's been stripped out compared to what we've seen currently on uh, on the back of a truck. Oh man, it's oh, that's just heartbreaking. <laughs> you, you know how you felt when Fulvio lost it. That's yeah. how I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah, I did. I think I involved in there. I was doing and BMW when I was racing. But uh, as we, as it stands so far, we've got Andrew Rastrofus leading the pack, Scoot White in second place, Charles Ranges in that MGGT in third, Paul Hill in Miss Money Penny, that Aston Martin in the fourth place, Byron Mitchell in fifth, and Morris Jackson in sixth place, Michael Steven in seventh, still Silvio Scabanti, um in eighth place. He was one of the first, one of the first cars to actually um, cover field and, and catch up with the back markers to start overtaking. Um, he's in, in, in eighth place there, and then Aldo Scribante in ninth place. The Scribante family staying close together there. And then bringing up the top 10, but we'll to uh, see the Saul McLaren from the Ultimate Outlaw um, remaining on the field there. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And uh, Graham Nathan in the number 11 car, that's uh, the VW Motorsports Super Cup. And it's got Kara Hill also in a Super Cup chasing him down. Nick Adcock in 13th place is going to also be trying to close down the gap. He is in that Nova, which uh, needs to try and make up a few positions. It's a Class A car. It's meant to be right up towards the top. But remember, it's still very, very new. And they're still trying to just fine-tune that car to get it going. Nick Adcock participating in the Asian Le Mans and the, the Asian Le Mans series and the European Le Mans series in an LMP3, uh, now going and bringing in the Nova MP002. Now that MP002, uh, to put it in perspective, is a uh, it's pretty much like an LMP3 car, uh, a low lower homologated car, uh, which is usually uh, racing out with the uh, Pilot Challenge, which you'll see the LMP3s and the, the GT3 car racing over. It's just one step under the okay. under the LMP3s okay. out there, so it is a proper proper racing machine. That will do battle, but I do see the safety car is off, which means we're going back and racing. Well, fantastic. It was like forever, but it's a good thing that I was recovered safely and quickly as well as efficiently. A lot of these races are probably itching to get back underway and get back onto their normal programs. And yeah, it's a cool pace as we make their way, as they make their way rather down the home straight to the gaps immediately open up. The pace and pace immediately deliverable. Well, the slow cars immediately the left of the and Aldo has got two two cars in front of him there. I think it's a Juno and a... That's, a, that's a, the Nash that's ahead of him there. He has to get past. Yep. And then he has to go after the box. Yeah. Got, got to get the hammer down a little bit more. But out in front is this little that will be the connector in the Sparco livery with Andrew Rachel behind the wheel of the RDSA driver going in and getting a little bit of the invite to have some fun in the Geneta. He's got Stuart White, the GT3 driver that really won overseas and great name for himself. Oh no, that's the pull beam. That's the pull beam and uh, that's on the infield. That is a problem of note because now to try and get that back, you either go forward and risk bottoming it out. And uh, he's going to try Gotta be careful not to bottom the car out because they are extremely low on the curb. They have to be so so careful to get themselves going once again. Car Hill though having a difficult time. There we go. The ball being back up and going. Uh, he's going to try and close down the distance as he falls down through the field. 
I remember seeing, I think it was the Juno Beast at Swart Corps on one of the curbs. It's actually quite a task to get it off. And you have to be, there's a certain degree of luck for you to be able to reverse it and get back to racing again. Otherwise, it's safe to find something. I was able to be cleared there with relative ease and got racing underway. I think we had a shot of that dolphin peeling back into the field. Probably going to have a bit of a lonely race for a bit until the rest of the grid catches up. Um, to him again, that is Oliver behind the field there. Oh, Michael, got... Michael Steven around the outside of Andrew Coldburst, and there is the MJR. Audi RH trying to get past as well. Silvio Spaventi getting trapped as the BDR racing Porsche tries to also make it crap. Silvio sends it up on the inside, and he wants to just not hang around at this point. He wants to get going as quick as possible. Please note that I did see the brake pedal slightly flash up the lights for the brakes slightly flash up on the mjr buddy the rf that's all the bit behind just to try and allow the guys to get past as quick as possible not to impact too much of his time so marius jackson also trying to just let the guys go as quick as possible and not get caught up but they right up against the back of the vw motorsports super cup and silvio getting pushed to the outside line that's not going to help him He's got to try go for it. Going to go down the inside, it's to the same. Didn't have enough legs to do it. Unfortunately, he's got the light of uh, Marius Jackson just ahead of him. He's getting the run around the outside of the Silver Cup through the infield. Very difficult. And Silvio will be very aware of that corner because that's where he made a mistake in round five. Hard onto the brakes, and now he has got lots of uh, the car racing. Right on the back of a big glass front, not hanging around. He's trying to close down the distance as well as trying to make his way up. But 12th place, which is the BW Super Cup, that blue BW Super Cup that's just one hour shot now, that has got Graham Nathan behind the wheel. It is having a physical training with Barry Hill having to try and run away from Charles Fisser and Andrew Horn, who's pulled it further back. Andrew Horn has actually got one of the Backdrop Roadsters right up against his tail. Unfortunately, he's only winning just on outright being a lighter car, but uh, there's quite a bit of displacement behind him with a V8 Roadster catching up. Son Ludley, he's having a great time out there, just pedaling it around, and as you heard, just enjoying himself in the car and doing some refinement work to it. But there is the Nash machine going and working its way around, getting chased down by the number 42. That's Trevor Graham. That's Trevor Graham right up against the back of him. So Trevor Graham trying to close down the distance. You can see the difference between the backdrop roads that utilizing all the power close up to the Nash, but unfortunately when it comes to cornering, that backdrop road step is about a ton compared to what's ahead of him, the Nash of 700 kilograms. And uh, still talking about weight coming into play, that's it. Our leaders carving their way through as we saw Charles Ranji going up on the inside. He's taking big this goes around the outside of Papu, gets back on the race like just on the apex, lacking enough as they make their way around the circuit so just keep an eye out on it it's going to be one heck of a race as they make their way around the circuit yeah and he's a, set, uh, a very emphatic but unfortunate example well, i think a lot of them are going to be a lot more careful about really navigating the field They're around the back um i'm looking at one of the fantastic looking at the novas liveries you cannot miss it and also the glare of those lights is getting brighter and brighter you are talking about the clear of great Seeing the clear of lights at the moment as it gets dark and behind the it's going to be a lot more over the, the, the Elvis Brunty circuit. And temperatures are going to be cooling a lot quicker. And at the moment, we're approaching the halfway mark. Remember, there are, in essence, three races happening at the very same time during this wild period. First hour is where we're going to see the one hour dash, as well as the SHBT field heating. And we'll pull it off as the one hour mark. Um, five fights. I believe that they have a good deal. That's going to be the signal for uh, Michael Steven, which could be seen, uh, Rian Portma, as well as Paul Hill in Miss Money Penny there to fill off. And then the rest of the world continues as per the day's program. With um, Solaranchis there nearly, nearly getting his bumper <laughs> right into a one of them there. I, never got I, think, that the was, I think that was Andrew Hulk, but that yeah. was slightly ahead of him. Yeah. But there is Paul in the Aston Martin making up the top room. He's right up onto the back of Silvio Scabanti as they carve their way through and uh, really getting a little bit more. One of the is just keeping a good time as two on the back drops getting put onto the dirty line. There is no grip out there. It's just marbles and the last place you want to be. So running out wide can be extremely bad for your race. 
you got to ensure that you keep it all together. But look at the closing distance. It's the likes of Oliver's BMW. Slight rattle on the bonnet as he makes his way into turn one compared to the EDR 992 Porsche as it comes by. I mean, there's a closing speed difference that does make this track rather challenging. And let's, let's put it this way. Oliver in the BMW is doing a one minute 14.8 around the circuit. Yep. while our leaders are doing 57 56 seconds so i mean that's incredible then you've got the battle of the sagt going on where andrew colbert's not giving any room as he makes his way around but it does look like elvis Cavanti goes and sneaks past oh andrew into the dirt the same the same point where he says peace does yeah no this is in through the infield so okay okay okay, okay so I'm not quite the yeah, yeah. Not quite the same place, but not where you want to be falling yeah. off at, a, at 110 kilometers an hour. That's for certain. Oh, not at all. Oh, geez. Nice recovery there. Got back onto the track as quick as he could. But again, being on the dirty side and being on the marbles, you're going to pay the price. Now, the light's starting to come on, the sun's starting to set. And one thing we're also going to talk about, as the sun starts to set, it will start landing in the eyes of our drivers. Now I'll go and chuck in while you're trying to battle it out. And the sun would be. Happening and out with Nick Adcock going up on the inside. The Nova going to make short work in that GT3. And uh, the Nova having about 450 plus horsepower underneath it. Yes, it's got the power to weight ratio that can outmatch a GT3. It's still got to try and get past there. Then you've got Paul Hill. He's trying to carve his way through. Doesn't have the easiest of time to get out back off roasters. And he's about to get out the SAGT at the moment as well as the, S, uh, the Dash. So he's got races and they are halfway through that one hour the first hour of the race so that's something they're going to be well aware of this and uh, Marius Jackson carving his way through he's also trying to make a bit more of a run and close down the other lights of all the hell ahead of him there goes Andrew Rackshaw up on the inside he's completely gone from uh, from the life of uh, Oliver Hiatus who's uh, really just driving his way around it's just a no contest at that point. Then Stuart White, under braking, trying to keep it all together. He is going to be sharing that car. And you can see the aggressive driving style coming into play. Right up on the inside, two one. No fear whatsoever. Aldo Scribanti also cutting it a bit close and uh, cutting the corner close. There's Stuart White saying, listen, I'm going to get closer. Those little bollards are, I think, you know, it's there to deter the yeah. drivers from cutting it. But uh, I think at this point, it's... How close can we get? There, there. In the same radio line, telling each other, okay, I've got one centimeter, can you half a centimeter? That was very, very close. But if well controlled and very well, uh, look, both cars are very stable. And well, they're pretty much a mirror image of each other. So they can handle the text of the the right big badge, that part of the race. Aris Jackson currently sits in ninth place, I believe, where he's positioned just in front of those two who are making their way uh, past the, the backdrop cars there, who are doing a very good job of steering clear of the drama. Man, a lot of obstacles, very high speed pack, man, the high end pack, man, at the very least. But um, just looking at the pace difference, Stuart White, 57.4 is his best time, right? Andrew Rackstraw in second place has a 56 dead. And that is at different times. So Stuart White is later on into the race at around 15 laps, but Andrew Rackstraw was lap two. Okay, I do want to point out yeah. then Andrew Rackstraw has lost a position to Stuart White. Yeah. So did Andrew Rackstraw get caught behind back markers to a point that he couldn't get past, yeah. and that allowed Stuart White to just dive up on the inside and get going. Charles Arangi's in third place, though, is so close to Andrew Rackstraw, who's just flashed right at the moment. Going, please, guys, just find yeah, out the way. Yeah. Pulling the fit, something. <laughs> I've got to get away from Charles Arangis in that Mercedes GT3 chasing me down. Oof. At some point, it looks like they're going through your breast. <laughs> These sections are so tight. But um, it looks like... Uh, is oh, that no. oh, where do you go? Where do you go? Charles Arangis threading the needle eventually. Oh, and trying to figure out where to go. Getting caught up behind... There's Andrew Colford though, getting it sent up on his inside as uh, he tries to battle it out. He has got the Juno up on the inside of him, that number six Juno of Byron Mitchell, putting the power down, tried getting around Andrew Colford, but Andrew putting the, his foot down and breaking away. He's able to utilize the power to get away. And, uh, oh my heavens, it's, uh, 
Oh no, there's contact! Woo! That's Aldo! And that is Mario Boris Jackson. Jackson! But there is damage! Yeah. There's bits on the track that's left over of Mario Jackson's car. Check, there's only work that is blue. From the yeah. rear. Yeah, I think it is my I don't know, does that mean we're going to have a safety car again? Because there is essentially bits that on the track. track has, no, but Mario Jackson took some severe damage there, so I wonder what happened between him and Elder's front. That also affects Elder's Grunty's car yep. of what damage is onto it. So Morris Jackson trying to get himself going and let's see when the camera comes in the shot, you can see anything on that right hand side. There it doesn't is, have a wobble or anything. It's fine. Uh, well there's bits on the circuit there yeah. that can tell me that oh, rear wing. Yeah. Look at his rear wing. Yeah, a puncture. Very there's a puncture yeah, that's there and yeah. ow. That Audi's missing a little bit and that's that's going to damage the rear axle as well. Yep. Suspension. Oh man, Jeez. sure heartache. If you if you don't have heartaches of seeing two GT3 cars getting hurt like that, ah uh, man, it's uh, it's painful to see. But it's it's motorsport. This is what mixed uh, mixed class racing can end up. Yep. You may push it a bit too hard and get caught up. And considering we've got essentially three championships in one race at the moment, uh, and that's to exclude. Yeah, you know, excluding class championships because we've got a class A, class B, class C, class D, class E. Yeah. Racing has even, I can see the court out behind here is right behind the likes of Graham Nathan. These two know each other all too well. And Graham Nathan, well, he's just going to say, look, you've got the power to get past me. Try and figure your way around. Yeah. Here it comes Silvio. He's not going to close down the distance. There is more than room from. Uh, on the back draft roads is that uh, triple two battling it out. That's got Ben Morgan Rue behind the wheel. He's like in 22nd place. And uh, by the looks of it, is trying to make up some time. Goes up through Dean Wilson, who is a proud of the who's in third of our class. Then it's Gavin Rook and Andrew Horn leading out our class. E. So something to be aware of. No safety car, so it looks That's like they are. In response to that, 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 as yet, uh, what happened there? So, possibly a message coming. But it looks like so far the bits and pieces of that MGR Audi not too um, um, destructive of the current flow of the race. It's not been getting in the way of them. It's on the outside, it's on the pretty side, and some of it is on the grass. It's not directly affecting the racing at the moment. And it doesn't seem like even at that part of the circuit, it looks like the third from last corner, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, before the home stretch, what's the last point if I'm not saying come up with it? Um, doesn't look like it's affecting any overtaking happening there. No, relatively safe until I, further notice. I do want to point out, I've just got a message from Tristan de Norbrega, who's in the pits. He's helping out to the guys, but he's also going and uh, keeping an eye on the race thing happening. He's also keeping an eye on Andrew Ratchel, who's his teammate with the RDSA. Yeah. So, uh, not only going and enjoying it, but in the back of the pits, the guys are watching the live stream to get an understanding of what's happening. So watching their mates out there, and at the same time, keeping an eye on the events going on. So uh, Tristan the Norbrigger, how's it, buddy? It sounds like Tristan will take you through a drip if you just love him. It's a great thing. That's fantastic. Great to see again. A lot of people joining us on the live stream as well. Very excited for what's going on out on YouTube. And let's see one of the Do you know, it was quite interesting how it, you were talking about the lightness helping them to the corners. Now, it, it sort of give, does give a battle to those GT3 cars when they're close to each other. It's not so easy to get past them and get around that team. Right. Now, that's it. And there comes the, the Juno, Byron Mitchell, making short work of it. You can see Durant Motorsport, that part of the Dolphin Racing team, uh, that are having a bit of fun out there. Byron Mitchell been really having a lot of fun today and part of the Cape Tonian contingent that's going and racing with us for the SAE round three. So that's always great to see part of the sports in GT. Uh, so they've been going out there. A little bit of touch of the dirt, and that was Rolf Duplessis. Uh, don't think, uh, is it, well, take, your, take the advice from the McLaren in the dirt is never a good idea. He's careful with it. It's the, you want to do a, a double. <laughs> You want to double whammy of those for McLaren? Please, my my heart's on tape. Oh, please. Not again. Uh, it looks like, okay, well, it looks like we're just going on with normal racing. I guess, uh, as we said, those bits and bobs of the MGR are an race as it is. I wouldn't like to go wide and catch it. Yeah. Because I think that's a bit of a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, 
that's, that's the thing. That's the tricky part. If someone's overtaking another and you're on the dirty, you don't want to be on the dirty side of that part of the circuit. Because you're going to have bits of whatever was yeah, remaining yeah. on that MJR Audi into underneath the car. And especially if you're in, yeah. you know, the likes of, you know, backdraft car won't feel it as much as compared to the, the GT3s. But even yeah. worse is your prototype vehicles, uh, such as the Juno, the Nash, the Janetta and the yeah. Nova yeah. would definitely feel that almost immediately coming into play. The GT3s might shrug it off, uh, but you, you know, your backdraft roadsters wouldn't have too much of an issue driving over a piece of plywood. But that does go and cause punctures, and that does throw a spanner in the works for you in the area of strategy. So you guys are going to have to be well aware of that. It's very ginger as it yeah. It's offline, so it's something that happens, you have to be a bit cautious of as they make their way around. And it's interesting to observe that the cars are approaching, of course, people have been approaching. The approach occurs a bit differently, but it seems to me like the supercar are the only cars actually making contact consistently with the curb. As Silvio Scribante just pulled into the pit there, Paul Hill in tow does exactly the same thing as opposed to every point where at the 40 minute mark, like Perfect time to be able to make it mandatory pits. And you can see Silvio in and out. Yes. In and out. That was a, what was that? A yeah, drive through. That was. It looks like that was a drive through. As you can see, none of these mechanics responded to him and no changes were made. We all saw that in real time. It wasn't a real uh, replay or anything. That was quite interesting. Okay. I mean, certainly, like, a drive through, they would get a later on, but he pulls back into the field and he's back underway at full pace. And normal racing resumes as one of the AMD cars there and he's uh, all mixed cars. It's a, a quite a blend of different classes of cars and that's Stuart White as ever, fully aggressive, fully on it. Or that is Michael Steven has got a similar um, degree to this right? um, But Michael Steven of course is manning the, the steering of that Audi R8 Evo 2. That draft very, <laughs> very soon going to find out there's a quick GT car behind him there. I, I think at this at this point, you if you're in these type of cars, like the, the backdrop roadsters, the Nash, the, the Junos, the, you know that you set your car up to go on the outside line all the time. Yeah. Just set yeah. yourself up that you have enough aero to be on the outside line without a problem. Uh, because you're going to forever sit there, or you're going to sit on the inside, as Buffalo is going to realize as well. He's got no room to go, so he's going to have a very, very tight corner. And I think at this point, they're waiting for the one now to be done, so at least there's just a little bit more breathing room. Not much, but if you can take one breath, better than no breath. Well, how many breaths, how many breaths can you squeeze into a lap when you're twice as, almost twice as fast as the trailing car? What I mean by that, the fastest guy, if you get very close to being twice as fast as the coolest, like your um, moment, um, the, the, the Oliveira um, in a um, dolphin over there, it's almost double in terms of speed, and you, you're covering one lap, whereas the BMW has to make its way twice around. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, he's really going and having a huge amount of fun, that BMW showing off what it can do and uh, keeping ultra reliable. That's the main thing you can do. Think about an endurance race, it doesn't matter how slow you are or how fast you are, it's about going and getting to that checkered flag. Because if you're a car that can't make it to the checkered flag, well, you caught out. For example, he's uh, a Chris, he's out of, out of the race. And at the moment, Darby Oliveira is uh, currently oh, he's currently ahead of Morris Jackson, who is involved in the collision. Uh, and he's ahead of his least. So he's ahead of two GT3 cars. <laughs> And at that point, yes, they are, they're racing for the, the SA GT and the yeah. SA, the SA, well, the, that, you're still ahead of them. You're still going to finish in the results ahead of them because you've been kept out of trouble. And that's the main thing to do in a race like this is just keep it out the pits. And that's that's a road going, like you're saying, it's a road going E30. And if he's fitted a radio and a live stream in there, he'd be glad to hear what you're saying. I, <laughs> Being I, a think, of a GT3 I think it's car. a bit stripped out. So <laughs> a, it, a it, it, it's it's I think it was a road going car, uh, but it's it's definitely been stripped out to yeah. Oh, oh shot shot the the went off and he has to work his way back on. Maybe he made a bit of contact. 
like Gadino and bothering him because if that MVG is in front of him, it looks like there was a lot of space. If Solfus was there, that I was his own mistake. I think Solfus went into the corner and got yeah. a little bit hot, and that yeah. uh, that brake pedal wasn't going far enough forward. <laughs> Oh, aggressive. There's something you know when Stuart White is in a car. There's no no mistake about it. Well, we've seen him have a rough time. Let's take a look. Let's go jump back a little bit to Red Star where he took the Aston Martin. And unfortunately, due to a computer failure, picking up that the clutch has got a clutch, but it actually turned itself off on circuit. Yes. And he was battling to get away at the Red Star. But that was great fun and dusty. Go back to Swapos, where that very little bikini actually caught fire. Yeah, he's actually had to go, go into his spare cars quite frequently, and I think it's really good. My mistake, or Casper. Looks like he was good. If it could be wrong there, we'll get another shot from the official. This seems to be okay. Yeah, As you um, see, his rear right jacking up there now. He's still on the track. That is um, Stuart White there on the main street, leading a uh, leading uh, of cars. Uh, the one rare instance we have three or four straight. Um, cars in the same class. That's just how challenging it is to navigate your way around the circuit. And there's that instance I was talking about, how these supercar polos are meeting that curb almost perfectly each and every single time. It shows a different handling that you have next up on this. Well, take a look. The, the supercar, uh, EW supercar, they are front wheel drives. They get on the car, the yeah. cars can put it That's yeah. what a front wheel drive does. Yeah. Compared to the rear wheel drive of your GPs or background brokers, uh, the Juno, the Nash, they all rear wheel drives. This is the only front wheel drive vehicles currently out on circuit that are having a great time out, but it does make it more challenging around the corners. It's not like very well, but you go offline and you stand on the power, you're going to understand the bunch like suddenly at the moment as he tries to get going. But uh, it is a beautiful shot of Quebec's son and well, it's starting to get chilly there because I see some people putting on jackets, which tells me quite a bit. And uh, wind has died down. Looking at the flags, it has died down. That's at least positive. As far as I've been told, winter down there is no joke. Uh, thankfully, I was there when it was a little bit warmer, but the cold air will always work well for cars, but for your pit crew, for your drivers, uh, a cup of coffee is down there. Yeah, someone is holding up some of the mics. Then, of course, he did his mini quarters off the way across this particular segment of the race. He's going to hop into another class of power at some point later on during the four hour. But um, things look pretty good right now at the moment um, as it will bring closer to the end of that one hour dash up to that segment as well as the SHGT car that is possible. Five cars in total, part of that class, and one of them has retired a lot earlier on in the race. Um, it's like he's just coming to what was, it seemed like, or outbreaking himself on the inside that, of the that circuit. Was, that was yeah. definitely outbreaking himself yeah. on the inside, trying to get past a train. And unfortunately, at that speed, it doesn't matter how much or how big your brakes are, there's only so much tarmac to go for. As we see the likes of Mick Adcock, he has got Stuart White right behind him. Stuart White really putting the power down on that Lamborghini and chasing down that Nova just ahead of him. Will be able to get past, but Nick Adcock's not going to make it the easier to go and do it. There's the BBR race machine with Nick last time behind the car. He's been doing a tremendous job in the SA GT. Was right onto the back of the GT3 cars, but the BBR racing team are actually second in the championship so they want to maximize all the points there is Carlos Gavanti going around but you can see how that Lamborghini was limping its way around. Aaron Pretorius 262 going and battling it out with this race machine they are duking out trying to go a little bit quicker lying in 20th place they're looking to maximize the points for class E to become the class E champions for the right for the year of 2023 for the SAE but check how busy it's going. Stuart White having to thread the needle. Nick Adcock having a little bit of an easier time as the cars cars move over to the right hand side. He has to put the wheel onto the third though as he was making his way through because it didn't look like Trevor Graham was going to give him too much room there. Runs out a little bit wide, a little he bit did. of the dirt. He did. I know it was. I you saw that. That was an awful lot of wide. 
these little concentration laps they had to recover it maybe? Uh, I think going into the corner a, a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, just losing out a bit yeah. of time. So yeah. that that's a problem. Or well, maybe you was trying to do something like that. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I, I promise you, at least one of these cars has a radio fit in. There's so much technology happening in these cars. But I doubt, I doubt it would be worth taking up that much space for the you and I. I think their primary focus is to make it uh, to the other side of this exciting four-hour race. And at the moment, the sun looks like it's done its beautiful day. So a lot of the light we're seeing on screen for the moment is the glare coming from a lot of the cars as it's going from the next to be around up to in one. And wow. Okay, we've got three, four backdrafts right now in a bit of a race there. I see Baba Kobulu's, okay, it's two backdrafts. Yep, that is the, the Kobulu's backdraft who's got uh, Rolf Duplessis right behind him leading three or four GT cars. So it's gonna be, they're going to have to make quick work of that. But he's probably going to, I think as a faster car, you appreciate making your way past the back marker because you know the job he's going to do for you when he's walking guys back up behind you. Uh, you in this point, you've got to you've got to run things so carefully, yeah. and there, there's a gentleman handshake amongst all the drivers yeah. to keep it clean. Because this is the rules of you know, keep a predictable line, but you can see lights being flashed as Andrew Axel trying to make his way through. He's caught up behind Andrew Cuthbert and doing everything he can to get past. But Andrew Cuthbert at this point has got less than he's got less than ten minutes to go. Well, about ten minutes to go of the SA championship and the one hour dash championship to make as many points as possible he's got some Ludwig but you can see the V8 half way around so the CD is able to strike it live and Andrew actual game by and here comes Charles Rangis who is third and right ahead of him is second place so Andrew actual at this point is feeling Charles Rangis breathing down his neck the Stradali um, team going and having a great run in the Mercedes side by side there for you see how they came out of it, you can't really see the clear right? It's a bit neat and now. Oh, 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 someone got a wheel off there. Oh, that must have been weird. Yeah, it was. He's now played up with the end of the game. He's there in the road. And it looks really good at the moment. Has to make light work of um, is that That's hard to do. Yes, he has to make light work of that very quickly and and move right along. Solid range. He's also in the mix there. Nice work there between a very neat overtake there and Republic going ahead of Sun. Two big put express yeah. cars working together. No no stressing each other out. They know who they're racing. Hey, listen. Keep it clean. <laughs> we have the same goal in mind. Finish the race. Because there's there's a race against other cars. This is what I wanted to touch on. Um about the race. Um in the race against other cars in your class, there's a race overall against every other car, and then there's the race against the race itself. And that is a different thing altogether because that brings everyone in. And you can get situations now where you have an E30 BMW Dolphin being finishing ahead of a GT3 car in a four-hour insurance race. Yeah, this is where it's going to be very interesting as you see Dean Wilson being overtaken by Silvio Scrabanti. He's trying to close down the distance to the likes of Michael Steven. A uh, bit of a distance between the Michael Steven who's been pushing incredibly hard and opening up the gap to the likes of Silvio Scrabanti. He doesn't want to be anywhere close to uh, Silvio at the Point, considering their race is nearly done and dusted with only eight minutes left of the SAGT and the one hour dash he dives up on the inside of uh, one of the big first cars was there is Stuart White though in, in that into Africa Lamborghini putting his foot down and really trying to close down the distance he has been on an absolute charge at the moment last lap time though was a 59.2 still quicker than Andrew Rackshaw being a 59.9 one minute but that's just because of pure traffic that he's been trying to carve his way through and uh silvio now trying to keep his power down here comes Stuart white lights ablaze dives up on the inside manages to make a set roof to see he's caught up in a bit of a tussle as well as he's right behind the lights of uh trevor graham and cj blackman who have been duking out just ahead of him yeah michael's been leading up course the entire class that's going to be being away in a couple of minutes time and it's interesting to see again is that same gap we observed early on in the day first round round five um, um one hour early on in the country that same gap uh, even at first and second as if pretty much running on the same strategy running with the same pace same level of aggression and despite the traffic those two have been inseparable um, in the entire days 
Oh, uh, just getting uh, a little bit of information here from uh, Tristan. Tristan saying they're not going to give away too many details, Joe. So unfortunately, uh, I tried calling my contact. My contact said, "I love you, buddy," but it ain't happening. Um, this is the debut outing for well, a debut endurance outing for the Nova. It has had a run in Cape Town around Kalani with the the Sporting GTs, and at the moment they are keeping it all together looking at taking all the data burned at the moment the call but at the moment they're happy with the position and happy with the pace we'll see what the outcome comes from so who knows what the strategy is but uh as they say who's who's got to see ships and uh the worst idea is to be friends with the commentator who is not the least of some place uh, uh, oh man the commentators the commentators feed, feed off of word counts so Best thing you can do around a commentator is keep quiet because that is going to put the conveyor belt and onto the hill. <laughs> um, I think we're smartly done there. Very smartly done. This is just Gavante makes it around the circuit. Of course, he's in second place with uh, one hour sprint statement of this race. And you have a spot of by four and four um, out there. One of the spectators probably have abandoned and gone into their cars because it's so chilly. I think it is so cold. I see the flags, the Muslim flags there in the center of the still um answering this so i think it's a lot chillier than before of course the sunlight at the moment but i have plenty plenty action there brightening up our screens and we get to get as bright as we can now because it was not as dark as messy without screening but again it's just one day i'm happy to be um, getting very close to securing and bagging that second place for yeah it's just something to think about the guys really uh trying to push a little bit harder but we are going to be finishing up in less than five minutes for our SAGT and our one hour dash championship for uh, their round six and it's been an absolute it's been a fantastic round the one hour dash this is their third outing and then the SAGT this is round six for them yes so they're trying to battle it out and our SAE is for their third outing this year so they also having a bit of a run unfortunately we had to miss a race due to uh and missing out on Pakisa, but I've got to say all the drivers got their elbows out and had a little bit more time to get the cars ready to head out to Eldo Gavanti, which is a fan favorite of the majority of the drivers saying that it is a difficult circuit, but at the same time, so much fun. A lot of drivers saying it feels much like having a, just a, a little bit of a bigger version of a go-kart track. Shelfers are all over the back of Graham Nathan in that shot as they're battling out to the Super Cup cars really on string their way around the circuit and uh, keep an eye on that battle because Graham Nathan and Schalfus are both in class D are running in 13 to 14 positions respectively to try and carve their way through but Michael Stephen there out on circuit the SAGT at the one hour dash in that Audi R8 LMS Evo 2 sure they just had all the all the letters they had for it but it's uh, absolutely a great run Olivier going out wide, he's trying to keep it all together and I wouldn't I don't envy any of these cars. When you get put offline, there's just no room for error at this point. Son Mudley, he's making his way through and actually getting a little bit of time to just take a breath. There's not many cars behind him or in front of him, so he has a short straight to get back on the power. Yeah. What did you say about losing I think the same applies racing lines. That's you're not gonna do that run to the very side, I think it's like very quickly and early on into the one hour race and of course guess what close we need to be done I think it's interesting for the one hour sprint having a bigger field actually helps because you're, you've got a shorter time to achieve your result and objective and the very early yellow flag I think also is a good thing for particularly the one hour guys as they had a free opportunity to make their stop without getting to the fight for the fact so on screen now, that's Michael Stephen leading out the SA GT and SA, the, the one hour champ, uh, the one hour sprint, or one hour dash, I do apologize. He is out in first place. Second to uh, the SA GT is Silvio Scrabanti in the Lamborghini. So he's trying to battle his way out. He's got Heinrich Lotzakon trying to close down. Remember the BBR is also participating in the four-hour endurance race. So they're yeah. they doing everything they can to, to uh, try and keep going. Aldo Scrabanti is lying fourth in the SA GT. 
He's trying to get a little bit more of a run, followed by Rolf Duplessis, and uh, also getting a bit more of a charge, running away from Andrew Colbert and Sudden Mudley. But overall, it is uh, going to be Charles Rungis, followed by Stuart White. So that's first and second battling out Nick Adcock in third place, trying to make up some time. Yeah, Andrew Axcrew in fourth, Michael Steven in fifth, uh, and it looks like a, he's got his doppelganger there, but I think the screen's going to correct itself. Andrew Axcrew in fifth, Silvio Scribante sixth overall, Hein, hein Latekhan in that BDR Porsche. Seventh place was Aldo Scribante down in eighth. He was so ultimate outlaw with McLaren remaining, bringing up ninth place. Now it's going to be an absolute charge all the way through, but with one minute left. The, the guys have everything on the cards for the SAGT and the one hour dash at this point to try and power their way around. And you can see the light coming in place at Aldo Scribante as the sun starts to set, the moon starts to rise, and life's about to get a little bit more difficult for our SAE for round three. I don't find the racing lines in the dark, I do not envy any of uh, the, the races endurance part of the course. It's, it's what things essentially pay to do and in the Nova is uh, Nick Adcock who looks pretty um, at home in it uh, despite the fact that it's mixed up as we see the MSA flag getting ready there to mark the end of the one hour dash and SAGT sprint and of course Michael Steven taking the honors there for very well deserved, very well run race overall for the day the same kind of dominance he showed in the morning he's earned and displayed here during this part of the race. Now, then he's going to be followed by Silvio Scribanti in second place for the SAGT and the one hour dash. So they have had a fantastic run. Uh, chasing him down, though, is Henry Glass's one, but he is racing in the four hour endurance. So I don't think they'll count. But Aldo Scribanti will be following up with the SAGT, so he's going to be having fun. But there's our first place man on the SAGT and the one hour dash. Michael Steven, one more corner to go right up behind the back of Andrew Colfitz as they get the power back on and we'll be seeing that MSA flag waving for him. He's going to be rather happy with that, taking not only first place for round five, but round six in a dominating victory. Silvio Scribanti tried his best, but unfortunately luck wasn't on his side this time round. And uh, let's talk about maximizing the points for your championship. Yeah, absolutely. And with so many cars to navigate around to you, wouldn't have been too impressed with the amount of work he had to do um, to stay just or to stay close enough to Michael Steven at this point. And knowing also how the last couple of rounds have gone for him. Ooh, one of the back drafts getting a bit awry there. Who was that? Lost it a bit. You see, it's, is it the darkness or was it the concentration? I wonder what that was there. Brilliant save because it looked like it was going to be ugly. I think that might have been the, the Morgan Rude machine uh, with uh, Ben Morgan Rude. Yep, that was Ben Morgan Rude that got it sideways looking at uh, just a little bit of you know, the, the stream going back. So just catching it slightly wrong, a little bit on the yeah, dirt, only yeah. on the power. Remember, the backdraft roadsters don't have you know, traction control, ABS, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. They just brute force machinery. So it's all but, driver skill there. Yeah, that's it. Nick Adcock, though. Going and having a bit of fun in the Nova as they power their way through. Fantastic to see the car. And being the first one in South Africa does lead the charge. Safety car board coming out, though. Hmm. That's a bit worrying. Do you think that is to clean up the circuit? Or have we seen something gone on? Both, we've got the medical car and the safety car going out uh -oh. as per the procedure. Yep just to make sure everything's okay. They'll be picking up Peter. Oh, here's a turn one, car 42. That is Trevor Graham. And that is a significant impact into the wall. The driver is okay. There's Trevor Graham. He's just fiddling around, but uh, one second hand back off roadster for sure. As you can see, it's the front suspension. It's the engine. It's everything yeah. pretty much. Uh, well, it's turned itself into a U. And that embankment plus tire wall, equals a, a very, very, well, hard saw car and a driver grabbing his phone to just SMS back that he is okay to his team. And also just to say, listen, guys, we, I think we're out of this one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much going into a concrete wall, given how you know, solid this part of the circuit is, but you can see the tire barrier did well to absorb as much of the force as possible. 
um and yeah pretty much i think it's a wrap this definitely does look like a quick um you know uh, duct tape and and q20 job at least at least i don't think so It'd be impressed it'd be very impressive to see that but unfortunately for, for trevor graham there's yeah it's the end of the day i oh, know unfortunate and uh well safety car comes out again and that allows guys to utilize a cheap pit stop as they make their way around the circuit but as it stands our sagt and our one hour dash done and dusted so a couple of cars now clearing the circuit to go and do finish up with their outing which uh, we will get our reporter on the ground to go and have a chat to a couple of the drivers which i'm really looking forward to while our four hour still commences but a bit of work to be done to go and push get that car sorted out but that's that's a heck of a speed to come off and to cause that much damage to the car um he was a passenger all the way until yeah. it stopped yeah because it's quite a long stretch from the, uh, the piece of track that he left to get to um that part of the barriers and, and uh, the tire wall there but yeah plenty has happened for the hour it's strange coincidence that this incident would come at the hour mark literally as the flag was going down for the one hour dash and uh sprint races but uh, of course nothing could be planned you never know what's going to come at you especially at such a long um event an endurance race and like i was saying it's either you're racing other cars or you're racing the race itself and this time trevor graham seems to be a casualty of the race um of it, uh, itself and and lost control of his car there and he's not going to be pleased with that but uh safety car of course doing its best to keep the cars warm enough tire temperatures as well as their brakes um re in a relative relatively good position for them to continue once that car has been recovered and, and as normal can resume I see also a couple of the fans peeling off from the little embankments that they were parked on. I think it's getting a bit chilly. They're probably going to find some shelter closer to the main um, circuit building to see the race from there and possibly hear what's going on. So a lot of the stuff that we're missing out on, maybe they can catch. But I know Nadine's out um, looking for some interesting ways for us to follow up on. Plenty happens. Plenty happens. Like a briar, nice warm fire. Certain parts of the circuit were safe enough to was that looks oh that looks fantastic we, we should try we should try this commentary from a little embankment somewhere and a bribe going i think that would slap yeah i think it'll be so it's 21 degrees at the moment feels 20 as per the weather uh but that is cooling down rather quickly as well so the guys are going to be well aware of the situation out there and uh there is a little bit of wind nine kilometers great yeah nine kilometers doesn't get you very far uh humidity 56 but normal coastal weather might see we could have rain but I, I highly doubt it but it is going to get cold out there it's going to drop to about 13 degrees and we'll probably feel about 10 knowing you and i uh if i say 10 degrees it's going to feel like three uh, if my eyesight serves me correctly that looks like mike Rowe in the main field on the up could be wrong but a man of his height and stature and hair color is hard to miss because he, he heads up the bw baseball team and one of his own protégés um, out on the field. I think it's it's going to be interesting. I saw how close um, the great Nathan as well as Charles Fisser are in the Super Cup class. There, there was nothing in between them, and it's signature polo racing. Oh, Gra Graham Nathan is a veteran. He's in the he's in the Polo Cup car getting chased down. Yeah. Uh, veteran in motorsports and heads up working a lot on. The vw challenge cars yep. the and everything so he, he's having a bunch of fun out there but he's also going to be teaming up with daniel rowe the son of of, of, of yep. micro so uh, he's going to be having a lot of fun out there so keep an eye on it we're looking forward to seeing how they do but waiting for the towing vehicle to come by to uh, help drag this 42 backdrop roads that Trevor grab standing next to the car and you can see all the marshals just trying to keep themselves warm as well. So it is going to be a challenge out there for everyone to keep themselves all sorted. But a big thank you to you guys joining out in YouTube, out on the grandstands. Glad to have you guys here being a part of the SAE, the SAGT, and also the one hour dash. And it has been having a huge amount of fun. Thank you to you guys and uh, we keep an eye on all the comments out there but as it gets a bit darker out on the circuit life's going to get a lot more challenging for these drivers everything's starting to cool down 
adrenaline's starting to wear out, and now it's going to be interesting to see how the work guys work out. Current changes, though. Zoli Lateka taking over from Stuart White. So Stuart White out the car. And Zoli Lateka taking over that Lamborghini currently in first place. Nick Adcock in second place with the Nova. Charles Arangis in third, trying to make up uh, some of the ground as well. So keep an eye out for him as they're going to try and power their way around. Uh, just seeing on a race monitor, it's actually a bit doubled. So I'm going to just double check that one. Not too sure. Uh, yep. So Zoli Lateka in first place. Nick Adcock, Charles Arangis. Heinrich Lartekhan, Byron Mitchell, Andrew Raxwell down into uh, sixth place. So they've done a pit stop to get that car sorted. We did understand uh, that they're going to try to keep a car going for at least about an hour and 20 minutes. But with the safety cars out, cheap pit stops do work to go and top it up. And when you work out the fuel usage per car, sometimes you run into those, uh, you got to do 4.5 pit stops because you need to chuck in a little bit more fuel. So... The guys are just getting it over and done with while the safety car is out here at Aldo Scribanti for the SAES four-hour endurance race as they are looking to have a bit of fun. There is the towing vehicle going to be picking up Trevor Graham in the background and that car is going to be recovered as everything has slowed down. Friends, while we've uh, hit this point of stuff has slowed down for the grid, it's been an interesting day so far for both our SAGT, our SAES, uh, our, our one-hour dash here at Aldo Scribanti. Lots of heartache for some and also some positivity going on for other teams. But as we head into the night, the challenges get compounded. Short circuit, dark, you're going to miss apexes. There's not many brake markers out there that you can visually see. So it's a lot onto muscle memory that you have to figure out and uh, very easily to get caught out under braking as we see a couple of the guys utilizing the cheap pit stops get it done and dusted as they maneuver their way around so it's something to be aware of that uh, short track not enough brake markers out there for you to just go and see a 50 meter board or a 200 meter board you're going to have to just try and iron it out and remember where the stuff is you might see the mistakes in as the night goes because we're going to be running quite late into the evening for this four-hour race. Absolutely. And I think that challenge possibly applies to people who are getting their stint later on in the race as opposed to earlier on. Unless you're doing a double stint of like, what, I suppose, two hours or one and a half hours or whatever the case may be. But we're at the one-hour mark now. And Tolia Litlaka, of course, has stepped into the car in place of Stuart White. And he would have more of a challenge, of course, than Stuart because he's coming in at a darker time. Likes of Cara Hill, who's gotten into the car there, into the um, the KLX Polo um, Super Cup car, um, also is going to have a lot more trouble, perhaps, that's in theory, uh, perhaps adapting to the darker situation and understanding where her proper brake mark is at this point. And at the same time, I think it could be, it could be neutral. It could be neutralized in the sense that this is the only condition for Lili Zaka or a Cara Hill and whoever else has just stepped into the car, those that can track conditions. In. That is, they're happy with this temperature, and this is what they're learning, and they build up from there. Well, Cara Hill's actually been in the car since the start. She's going to be uh, teaming up with Yuri Swart, and well, we also saw Michael Stevens' name onto the the side of the car. Yes. So we should see Yuri Swart uh, will be joining up because he does he does go and participate, as we saw yeah. at Red Star. The only thing is, Yuri Swart has done two races before the four hour endurance race in. Uh, in his cup car a little bit earlier so he's gonna have a little bit more of a, a downtime before they throw him in behind the wheel and as you said gonna chuck him in one of the most difficult ones off in the dark in the cold with a whole bunch of extremely quick cars out there that he has to contend with yeah it's just looking at an unfortunate poetry there um i guess trevor graham contending with the elements um number 42 uh, getting out and losing out and taking 24th place uh, yeah things things getting pretty much turned on themselves like you said the car's in a bit of a new shape and fate seems to be the same for him but um, yeah he's gonna have to watch the lights go by unfortunately until the end of the four hour race but yeah um, my mistake there on car hill but yeah my i think the the general sentiment is the the track is um at as i suppose as it's introduced to you right now i don't think it's going to make much of a difference because again it's all you've ever known i don't know if there's going to be a progression or change from here. You did say it's going to be a bit colder, but does it really affect the track 
at that point? Uh, yes, it does, because it does affect what your tire pressures are going to need to be at that point. And also, you got to think of, well, engines in cold, better, you know, better combustion. But in that respect, you're also going to land up with a colder track. That means less grip, not as much heat okay. into it. So less grip is going to come from it. Even though there's a lot of rubber out there, it's going to start cooling down, especially behind a safety car. You've got some your tire temperature all the way up behind the safety car it's cooling down 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 and all the cars that are just going slow behind the safety car aren't putting enough heat back into the circuit to get it going there's not as much friction happening out there so the guys are going to have to be well aware of that uh it, it's going to be a a, a difficult thing for the driver the drivers are going to have to figure out the teams with their slight adjustments also going to come into play on this one but uh uh, there is a uh, number 42 car getting moved that means that the race should be going underway shortly and uh unfortunately a retirement there but as you can see quite a substantial hit but i do want to put it out to this despite how hard that car has hit the wall yeah the driver can get out yeah. dust himself off and go walking that is a testament to how safe these cars are that you're not going to go in break your leg in a in a matter of seconds you're not going to fall apart like we used to have in the 70s where it, well the early 60s and 70s where the guys used to have the seat belts ripping out of the mountings we don't have any of that yeah, now this is yeah. all very 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 safe uh the only thing that's really going to hurt on this is one the bank and uh two <laughs> the confidence after taking the hit but try you know knowing the backdraft a team that put these cars together when you go and rent these cars or purchase these cars you can actually get an insurance out on the cars oh. as well and they can get bits to get you going they've got a whole truck in the back that's got gearboxes suspension parts everything except chassis to uh to get you back out on the circuit that's the one thing about the backdrop that i really love you go and have a failure whole gearbox blows up it's it's gone finished you can able to limp it back into the pit somehow get in the pits jack it up drop the gearbox go to the truck Pull our new gearbox, put it in, bang, sorted. You can be back out in the race. Uh, a thud like that, not so much. Yeah. It's all together. Honestly, because you, you've got a lot of speed on your hand to be able to cover that and get it back into the racing time. But um, yeah, speaking of the backdrop, Koski, of course, and Andrew Horn leads that. And behind him is Harum Pretorius very closely. I think that's a particular favorite of yours. I hear the, the pitch in your voice goes up, Steve, every time you talk about Harum Pretorius. Uh, Gavin Rook in third place in class, CJ Blackman in fourth. I love I love the backdrops. It's so close. There's nothing in between them. Dean Wilson in fifth place. And we're looking at Vigile Onumisa over there in sixth. Very, very closely contended class, one of my favorite. And apart from the fact that it's very easy um, or relatively easy to be competitive and maintain your cost and attain parts, it's also just a, a relatively equal level of skill that you're looking at all of these racing drivers but um we're looking we're getting closer and closer to getting our racing back underway i think a lot of the majority of the clearing up work has been done to actually neaten things up and and make sure it's safe for racing to continue i'd imagine also some of the debris that we saw from that mjr audi has been cleared i think that it was a perfect opportunity for that to happen in uh conjunction to clearing up the number 42 car of trevor Graham, who is in good condition, he was standing up, doing things, functioning as normally, didn't look to have any anals or pains and aches and sores. He looked perfectly fine, thanks to the safety level that we have with a lot of these cars. And yeah, a lot of exciting things, I think, to see towards the latter part of the race. It's a learning experience for some of these teams. I think Nick Adcock would be, would have the most interesting learning experience. He leads Class A um, with that um, Nova, which is out and out, out for eight of and Charles Ranji is in third place. Heinrich Latechan at BBR in fourth and Byron Mitchell in fifth place. Well, the one thing about uh, having the, the, the cars out there and with the race underway again, the guys really giving it all. One hour and 17 minutes done and dusted into this four hour race. And it's an onwards flight. So Charles Rangi is now trying to figure out how he can get past the Super Cup cars and close down the distance to the likes of Zoli Lutaka in second place 
after taking over the wheel from Stuart White. So it's going to be a proper uphill battle for him as they cruise their way through. I think at this point, this is the most dangerous part of the race where it's starting to get into that night time. The sun is still, you know, not too much in effect at this point, but you're trying to use the conditions, the dark, trying to get yourself going and hyped up after being behind a safe car. Now you kind of carve your way through the field or have guys carving their way through the field. You have to be so aware on the mirrors and instead you are going to be seeing headlights to it. In the cases of, uh, if you're in like the Super Cup, BMW, uh, any of the GT or Tintop cars, the much like your Junos and everything below your door, even the, the likes of the Backdraft Roadsters, you have these cars that are, you have the likes of the, the uh, Lamborghinis and also the likes of uh, you know, the, the Janetta and the Nova, which are below your door. They're lower than your door. Yeah. So as soon as they line up next to you, they disappear out of your mirror. They become in your blind spot and you just got to be listening out for them or turn your head and try and see where they are. Which, uh, the last thing you want to be doing in the park, especially on a very hard circuit like Elmo's Monday. It's Monday every single have That's what uh, there have been any racing line changes and we see that MGC I think a solar range is sweeping all the that looks really good as it always makes for a beautiful scene at this time of the day when you see brakes are uh, burning up and being bright red and the sparks going under the, the, the surface of the cars um, if, if there's any racing line changes I was making a point about how um, are they a bit more careful at this time I certainly imagine so especially if you've got two clock reminders at the hour mark I mean two different classes um, that is with uh, uh, it's like Spies as well as Trevor Graham. It looks like so far it's safety first, and I don't think the the tires and brakes, for example, may be at the temperature where you can get a bit too aggressive at this point. And we're entering maintenance stride, I would say. This part of the race onto midway, maybe two thirds of the way into the race, a lot more careful than they may have been at the beginning. Yeah, and taking a look at our classes, Nick Adcock reading the first of the class A's. So the tech has taken another class A, his third is Charlotte Rungis. Uh, he's been chased down and um, has Henrik Glatahan of the BBR race team trying to close him down. Aaron Mitchell of the Dolphin team going and having a bit of fun out there as well. They lie in fifth, Mikhail Patemba in sixth, seventh is Andrew Rackshaw, Marius Jackson in eighth for our class A's. Uh, moving into our class D's, Cara Hill, Graham Nathan, Charles Fisser. So it looks like Graham Nathan uh, has, well, pulled into the pits. Got his car sorted out, so he drops into second. Car Hill of the Kalex machine is leading out of our Class D's. Class E, though, is where things are a bit interesting. Andrew is leading it out in the Nash. He is getting chased down by Harm Pretorius. Now, some might be wondering why there is a Nash in a Class E, and you've got a whole bunch of backdraft roads. Well, it's because the Nash and the backdraft roads are on the same sort of platform. One another. They, they counteract one, one another. So Andrew Horn leading out to the class. He's got Harlem Pretorius on the Facebook race okay, in second place. And Gavin Rook uh, try and chase him down. Uh, ben Morgan Root Sr., who is in fourth place. Then you've got CJ Blackman, Mark Harvey, Akilo Humanissa, and uh, Trevor Graham, unfortunately, retiring his car. Uh, they are in the, the class E battling. Uh, so that's all the cars battling out. And then one right at the back is Jolivera. Netus in the BMW, he is still going and his way around. So good to see the guys having a bit of fun out there. But so far, 69 laps done and dusted around Aldo Scribanti. One hour and 22 minutes in the bag, and it's all, as you said, maintenance mode the whole way through. Now it's time to think about what your tires are going to look like, what your wheels going to look, 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 look like. You're going to have guys going and calculating down to the wire of what's your average speed, what's your average usage. Uh, what's your average lap time and how much time to go and try and see maybe just maybe you can save that extra two liters so it saves you that extra pit stop towards the end of the race the last thing you want to be doing at this point is a splash and dash because like what andrew horn's got where we just saw on screen have got a much smaller motor which means it drinks a lot less fuel compared to the likes of the backdraft racing uh, the backdraft roadsters that are, are very very thirsty v8 so the guys are have to be keeping that in mind if they're going for class wins what's the cars you fight up the hit a lot of a lot of uh, managing the racing style having a lead foot isn't the only thing that's cool the race 
in this part of the world. I love it at the moment, but it's like twelve minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Also, no, he was also Graham Nathan. Graham Nathan did pull into the pit, um, like we like you observed earlier on. Yeah, he mm-hmm. was. Um, he is hot on her heels. I wonder how long it's going to take him to actually close that gap. But I think she has a bit of breathing room at the moment. Shalfus, Shalfus, a bit further adrift, making up the third car of Class D over there. Um, I think that is the. Uh, yeah, is that the pull beam? Yeah, it's the pull beam, yeah. and there is lots of distance. Yeah, that too. It looks like it's going down. It's going down there. No, I was looking at lights in the distance. It seemed to be off from the dirt, but okay. yeah, that is the pull beam trying to make its way into the corner, getting back on the power. So it was just trying to maneuver its way through and uh, get going. So let's see how it's going to turn it out. And honestly, that's, uh, it's good to see the cars out. The guys from Hop Motorsport bringing the likes of the pill beam sports car into play and uh, we saw in Cape Town that whole thing pretty well done unfortunately had a problem right towards the end of the race and they, they've been sitting out of it for a little bit of uh Etheris, who is piloting the machine he's trying to make a little bit of room before Sandra Popari or uh, that's actually Mikhail Potemba that uh, will be jumping into the car and get going uh, looking at lifetime, he actually is in the car, so there is going to get over to the youngster and battling it out. So let's see what the what Timber will be able to do to try and construct that loop gap. He will be also handing over to his younger Bari, I would assume, um, as the race continues. Or maybe Francis uh, will jump back into the car and his legs. Why not? You came all the way out to South Africa. The last thing you want to be doing is sitting in the pit lane. You want to get behind the wheel and go and have a bit of fun. Exactly. And it's interesting to see the dynamic between, to understand the dynamic between the younger drivers and the older drivers. Quite a disparity and quite a difference in age between the top of the teammates, the Perez and Bukhari. Um, the driving style, you'd, it's easy to assume that uh, Mikel Putimba may be a bit more aggressive. But they, they, it's not uh, racing is not a place where you don't find a lot of ironies. You may find that he's actually the most careful of the two um, in his driving style, and he's, he's doing a lot more fuel management in in that um, in that. Uh, I'd, love, I'd love to get his feedback. Maybe Nadine is going to get a bit of a few chats. Get us a bit more of a It's a info. Forget it. going on. I'm down in the pit. A lot of reasons. I do want to point out though, it's good to see both in the SAGT and in the SAE, it's giving an opportunity to the youngsters yeah. to, to have a go. And you see a lot of the older drivers going in and inviting the younger drivers to have a bit of fun, join in with all the action. Safety car back out once again. I think it may have been the car that was slowing down just in front of the pill beam as, as it was putting up to this very section of the circuit, I think to the right hand side unfortunately yep. it's a bit dark to actually yep. see it but uh there's a safety car out that's another that's another one in the last well that's about three so far that have been uh, yep. going out yeah third one yeah third one in an hour and 26 minutes and uh oh it's it's going to be frustrating for a lot of these drivers because you're constantly sitting behind it and whatever plan you had of we're going to need to do four stops because we're averaging this lap time and we're battling our way through. Chuck a safety car in. Well, you can take that piece of paper that you wrote it on and uh, chuck it away. Go on to the next step. Like if you ran out of every page in your your book. So something for the drivers to mind. But it's slowing the race down once again. And this is where we're going to see patience of drivers coming into play. I feel that a lot of guys are going to have to try and refocus on the race at hand. They're going to have to look at each other and go right. What is our plan? What is our our goal to moving forward? And how are we going to better this? Yeah, absolutely. Patience is going to be tested. I was trying to figure out what that was that triggered the safety car, but some people, it looks like Sun Moodley taking advantage of the uh, safety car period and getting a free stop there, getting straight into the garage. That looks like a full entry into the garage. So what 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 is a typical procedure that calls for a car to actually for the whole car instead of to do a pit stop but to get into the garage uh sun Ludley has actually finished his racing so that is the sagt that you saw uh they've come off the way bridge oh, and they've they're, they're just getting themselves off parked up so the sagt car is actually just filing their way into the garage but any other car that's currently out on the circuit that pulls in the garage well it, 
a severe problem that you need yeah. the mechanics to work on yeah. it quite urgently. Uh, thankfully, no one else to have that, but as we can see the safety car out, that's going to affect all the strategies coming into play. It is starting to cool down, and that's going to be affecting a lot of the drivers as we try and work it out. Now, we've got to talk about this. Not only, there we go, we can just see slightly in the distance. What car is that? It is reversed up the hill. Is it? It looks like a backdraft. Is that the backdraft? Yeah, uh, that's hard, hard to tell at the moment. It looks like one of the backdrops. It's a white car. And when I remember having that type of movie or something close to that That would be the Morgan Root car, but the Morgan Root car is still circulating. So, it's uh, apparent from our, our directors as well. Yeah, it looks like more. So we'll find out in a bit who that is. But yeah, another safety car, third safety car in an hour and a half of the race. We're creeping in at the at two to the halfway mark, and he's can't, can't really. You're right. You can't really pin a certain strategy and predict what's going to happen during the course of the race if things are going at this pace. Um, that's for sure. So you're gonna have to keep keep on your toes and try and anticipate what's coming at you. And again, it's the race against the race, and it's gonna have a lot of casualties. It really does not have any favorites, or nor does it have the least favorite. It's just an even even um, um, score sort of meted out to everyone. You have to battle against the four hours in in the same in the same manner. And now so it's, it's so dark and it's even hard to tell. Actually, <laughs> can I can I just point out something? Yeah. Looking at uh, the race monitor. And I'll just want to check that. Uh, Andrew Rackshaw in uh, 7th of A class, but also way down the order in 16th position. Uh, you know, they've lost out a serious amount of time. And uh, we're just trying to see what car can someone uh, put their headlights. Oh, that is the Morgan Root car. That's blue, white, and stripes. That yeah. is a backdraft. That is the Morgan yeah. Root car. And I think it's uh, possibly parked itself on the tires. Yeah, it looks like a bit of an embankment there to get back out oh, of that section, yeah. That's right, awesome. so that's just changed it up for our class E because Morgan Roots have been doing very, very well this season. And uh, that, that's kind of put a, an end to their racing. And they said, somehow get that car going. But they're lying, not only fighting out for the E-Class Championship, they are first in the class championship, but at the same time now, they were 11th in the overall championship. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's interesting. And how, how does this end up in terms of cross evil current of the race? But looking at, at the shop end was, or is Andrew Horn, rather, and Han Pretorius in second place in class E, in third is Gavin Rook, in fourth is CJ Blackman and Mark Harvey. In the fifth place, there Figile Olomisa in sixth, and Ben Morgan Senior unfortunately finished on the tires, and it's the end for him, unfortunately. Geez, that is gonna sting for championship leaders. I hope it's something they can also fix quickly before um at least at the very least the the uh second hour of the race comes by. Yeah, and we saw this corner become a bit of Achilles heels. We saw uh Silvia Strabanti earlier he lost it through yes, there yes, and yes. was managed to keep it out of the wall and uh, definitely got a big scare unfortunately uh the morgan root car not having a good time so the the, the ben morgan root ford and mazda backdraft roadster unfortunately heading on straight and piling into the wall but there is the, the juno going around part of the sporting gt that had byron mitchell behind the wheel of it at one point uh, he's still behind the wheel. He's currently lying in fifth place with the likes of that's the Nova that's chasing him down. And uh, I'm just trying to see who's actually in that Nova. While well, you look for that class A, still looks um, like the the lead in the hands, we really, are uh, capable of Lele Tlaka. Joey Joubert is in second place, and Shalorangi's in third. Henk Latakhan in that BBR 911 is in fourth. And Byron Mitchell over there in fifth place, still on at, at the wheel. Kari Hill at the head of Class D in sixth place overall. And in uh, Graham Nathan is eighth in second place. Then for Charles, Charles Schiffer, I'm finding where he has moved in the driver change. 
in that first car. Uh, so Davi Jubey is actually in the Nova, from what I can see. So the, oh, that's Davi. Yeah, that's Davi in the car. So that's something to uh, be aware of. As they might be through. So let's take a look. Uh, past D though, uh, it's still in Charles Fisher, but he is right down the order. Yeah. And right down the order. I yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure what's going on. He might actually be out of it. Yeah, it looks like because he's now way down where a lot of the racers who's come up. Like for example, he's, he's on right lap 48. Now. He's on lap 48. No, he's out. So he's, yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's on lap 48. Uh, Graham Nathan in uh, the VW Motorsport Super Cup car in Class D has done 68 laps. Yeah. Uh, they are in the pits as well. Cara Hill, who's still out on circuit for the Calyx machine, has done 70 laps. Race underway once again. One hour and 34 minutes completed. Oh, no, it isn't. Safety car still there. I just can't see it through the bright lights. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I was hoping that the race was underway. You see, I'm getting excited. I want to I see the guys go racing again. This Sitting behind the, the safety car is not only frustrating for the, the spectators and the drivers and the teams and everyone that wants to go racing, but at the same time, it's a necessary evil just for the, the safety of all the drivers, the teams, the, the marshals out there just going and doing all the work as well. So while this is happening, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for the SAES round number three here at Eldos Grandi at Rebecca. And uh, I'd say it's been a very interesting day of racing with our SAGT and our one hour dash, and now also with our SAE, definitely putting in the effort as well. So a big thank you to you guys for joining. Also to the guys in the pits, busy watching us i know i know there's a couple of guys watching us in the pits yeah i'd like to say how's it and uh, hopefully it's not too cold out there don't worry i'll warm up a cup of coffee for you guys uh <laughs> <laughs> certainly a couple of fans keep me warm in the youtube comments yeah ccj blackman has a plan I Okay, so we're just getting a report that uh, Schalfisser was only entered for the one hour dash. So he was by himself in the car, which was that pure white Super Cup car. And uh, that's why he retired after 48 laps. So he was only for the one hour dash, which hopefully they can get it going for the next round of uh, racing with all the cars. Because it would be nice to see more of the Super Cup cars going out and having a run, considering they are quite amazing machinery for endurance racing. You wouldn't think that. Because originally they weren't built for endurance racing. They were built as a, a uh, more advanced cap for the, the VW Challenge uh, that was put there. So they have more modern machinery closer to the, the GTCs that, that race as a kind of a stepping stone. But yet they work so well for endurance. And that has been seen time and time again with both the Kalex machine and the VW Motorsport, maybe guys are starting to look at these cars and go, well, they do have a home to go and race in longer races and can prove in their consistency that they're able to go for it. I do want to point out, we're talking about overall championships a lot. We're talking about the guys going and fighting out to come first, second or third. We are missing out the simple fact of there is a index of performance. Now, people at home might be going, what on earth is an index of performance? Well, index of performance works as such. The more consistent you are, the more points you'll get. So if you are the most consistent driver or team out on the circuit, you score full points. The second, you know, closest times do it. So you want to be within 0.1, 0.2 of a second. If you're 0.3 and someone's beating you out, you come in second place, so on and so on. You go down the order. At the moment, though, it's led out by a class E of right motorsport going and leading our, our index of performance. So not our fastest cars, not our A-class cars, but our class E car. And that's uh, CJ Blackman and Jean-Paul Brenner that's uh, of Wright Motorsport currently leading out the index and performance championship. Second to that is Daniel Rowe. Well, Daniel Rowe of VW Motorsport. So he's lying third in the index and performance, but second of the teams. Then we have got Charles Arangis. So the Stradale and Mercedes customer racing team is lying third in the index of performance but is lying fourth in the driver index and performance championship at current so it's something to be aware of while our bdr racing machine this does uh, prove a testament to the drivers because we've got three different drivers that are all within each other's average lap time and they're running 
six and seven of the Enix Performance Championship and team running fifth in the Enix and Performance Championship. If you can get your co-driver to run the same times as you, as same as what Wright Motorsports has got at the moment, you do have a chance to win. And it doesn't mean you have to come first. It just means you keep it consistent and keep it going. So it's a diff. That is by itself, I personally believe, the hardest thing to do is to run a consistent average lap time with your co-driver because you have, as you brought up, varying driving styles, different uh, conditions that you race in. Your stints are different. Like some guys have raced in the in the daylights and they've jumped, they've taken their teammate, jumped them into the nighttime, and now the teammate's got to try and figure out how to drive at night and still run the lap times you are running in broad daylight. All, all the skills that people established. It's definitely setting a respectable pedigree, I think, for South African racing to have such a huge mix and a widespread uh, field of, of racing drivers and variety of, of racing drivers. Very interesting. I think that is a, 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 a challenging concept for a lot of the teams. It's like it, it, it's, it ups the level, that's for sure. If, for example, you've got a driver, uh, let's say, for instance, in, in the pull beam, and a Sandro Bicari is the fastest of the three uh, between himself and Mikhail Pittenberg as well as Francis um, Carithis. Um, it, put, it forces Pittenberg and Carithis to try and meet that standard, uh, let alone for them to be faster than the competitors, it's also for them to be faster than themselves. Level um, that, uh, for example, Bicari would be at. That, I think, it creates competition in the competition and that's all the entire level of racing that's required. But remember, you can have the fastest driver. Yeah. It can be great. He can be four seconds faster, and if you uh, three seconds, but you're the most consistent, and he, you know, he or she does two laps and then drops off by yeah. four seconds and then gains three seconds. There goes the index of performance in any case. So it doesn't matter if you're the fastest. Yeah. You've got to be the most consistent. So if you're putting in one minute ten around Aldo's Grandpa, your team has to put one minute ten. Even though, so even though the one minute ten isn't the quickest. Oh, okay, so I, I'd assume I would I would assume that everyone wants to be the fastest, but I guess that's not the real value when it comes to index of performance. I, I'd love to join the speed and the consistency, but it seems like the consistency outweighs speed in this at this point. So you know, things like that, you want to you, you get your faster drive and you yeah. just want to load weight into the car yeah. to ensure it's to slow him down. <laughs> okay so who's right. first to the flag but right. then you've got this championship as well yeah. that does put a spanner in the works for a lot of drivers and they've got to try and figure it out but this is what's the fun part about endurance racing is because you can have a championship like this that you can have who's the fastest and you can have who's the most consistent and the person that is consistent does get recognized for it there is effort into just being consistent in your drives and that's one thing that do want to point out and leading it out is a class e which yeah, is the compliment. slowest class out there yeah huge compliment to class e the fact that um i think it's a testament to all the things we've been saying about it the affordability um the fact that the class is so competitive and, and you, you see them now performing at the apex of the index of performance ahead of some of the high performing cars that, that's really yeah, but you, you can't get away. There is an overall championship and Charles Ranges are the Stradale Mercedes customer racing. Uh, they put their foot down and go. And uh, yeah. if they see the checkered flag first, well, they see the checkered flag first, take full points home and walk away with it. BBR Racing team trying to catch it down. And I do want to point that out, that BBR Racing has got a Porsche 992 Cup car and they're trying to case, chase down a more modern a 2020 or a 2021 GT3 speeds that ahead of them. They are close in points, but the total championship points for Schroeder and Jesus is 93 points. Yeah. But Heinrich Latakhan, Henk Latakhan, and uh, Verismo Tavares are all sitting on 88 points, which they can maximize those points and try and swing the championship in their, di in their direction. That will help them. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a tough challenge for them. And they're going to be hoping with their way during the, uh, the duration of the race. Looking at their, their sort of level of luck, let's call it, let's call it luck, over the duration of the season and over the past couple of, of, of years, they haven't had too many things to overcome when it comes to these random niggles that come and spoil their campaign. 
I think they, they can be a bit more confident than a lot of the other teams for whatever reason it is. Whatever they're doing, they should keep just doing that and it's going to work out for them, particularly with this endurance race and looking at the difference it's going to make for them with, with the points at the apex of, of the championship. Now, I know a lot of people are also going to be wondering of where's the leash here? We've seen the leash here has got out. Unfortunately, they are not in this race. Nick Adcock, though, and the Red Bull team have actually gone and replaced their Ligier with the Nova yeah. coming out, which uh, we saw out on circuit. Beautiful colors, Myers. Well, it's very striking. Yeah. Uh, but replacing the Ligier with something else and uh, running this is its first major endurance race. So it's raw data coming through, but at the same time, you want to ensure that it's up there. Davi currently in the car, lying in second place. He's going to chase down Zola Lutaka, who is in the GT3. And at the moment, it's getting really cold out there. They've been behind the safety car for quite a substantial amount of time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is where you're starting to ask the questions of what can we do to try and tip the scales in our favor? Because it's one hour and 44 minutes completed of this four hour race that they have to try and change everything over. And that's not going to be the easiest to deal with at the moment. Same as Charles Rangers is going to try everything he can. The pressure is out on that into Africa. Of uh, Zola Tucker. He's been given the keys from the Stuart White curve and saying, Look, there we go. You're tuning to go and have a bit of fun out there. He's going to have a very difficult time trying to build up heat into the car, into the tires, into the brakes to make sure he can get away from Darby in that Nova, that prototype that is a little bit lighter than the likes of the GT3, so it can close down the distance. Um, it's going to, this is all difficult. I I've have. A bit of a worry for the drivers because at this point the adrenaline has started wearing off to a level yeah. that it's 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 pretty much non-existent yeah, starting again it's a, it's a new race pretty much yeah it's a new race you're in the dark you've gotten into this drive around at a, at a, a slow pace everything's slowing down and also the frustration starting to build up let's go let's go let's go let's go i want to race but now the difficulty comes in of the more time the safety car is out, the more your strategy is, kind of, is changing yeah. in a dramatic fashion. And we will start seeing guys going for those splash and dashes that last 10 minutes, shove it in the pits, put fuel in and then go. Saw the situations instead of putting on the hour, which most people would like. Yeah, and it's not, uh, oh, geez, you're going you're gonna to hate me for this, but it might not be the last safety car we see. Judging by how things have gone, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's the end of it. There's plenty of challenges and curveballs coming the way of, of a lot of these racing drivers, but they seem to have succumbed or rather overcome um, the challenges so far. It looks like that uh, that the that Morgan Road car still being clear because I can see the lights of the it looks like the tow truck. They've yet to get the car onto the tow truck. Oh, like, yeah, you should the tire barrier that he came together with the race. Um, but uh, it looks like they haven't gotten any feedback about it. It's actually what we have down. Um, fine. And, um, sorry about it. Yeah, it's great. That's, that's what I'm doing. They're pretty much, they're going to have a two hour split. If you can call it that. Because we're encroaching very quickly on the halfway mark, and we're pretty much starting from scratch in terms of where tire wear is, for example, temperatures and hybrid, let's say hybrid fuel loads. You don't even know where you're at in terms of the fuel level here, so you have to create a strategy on the fly. I love, I love the challenge. Some of these cars uh, have got digital fuel gauges, so they can see just by how far they can go others yeah. are running a more analog system so it's basically like look where the needle yeah, yeah so look okay. where the needle is going some of the backdrops actually i think most of the drag backdrops actually have a digital display that they can see where they're going Do they uh, use similar displays to the ones we see in go karting like uh, yes. your microns yes I think I've seen yeah they, they do run them but you know more like the nash doesn't really have anything to check the fuel Whoa. So you're going on what your lap times are going to be, and if it goes splutter, 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 well then you know you're running out of juice. Uh, in other cases, in other cases, the guys are waiting for the the fuel light to come on, glow as red as can be, and then turn off. Then they go, okay, maybe I need pits. Uh, you know, at that point, uh, you know, I know when in these type of situations, if you if you're looking at your fuel gauge, much like the older cars, you could you you could convince yourself you got more fuel than you've 
than you've got because you can just turn a corner and hope the needle sways in the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, with, yeah. A, with a digital gauge, it doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. It. As, as professional and cutting edge as this level of racing is, there still is a bit of layman, um, I don't know, principles when it comes to, I know my car, okay? You know how far you can push your car after getting through the red light. Like Even if you so have a like digital that. gauge that says, listen, it's about 10 liters left in the car, there's always going to be the mentality of, of oh, that will get me a lap yeah, or two, but don't stress me yeah, yeah. 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 out. It wasn't, it was, I think, the reserve didn't have any fuel left and the fuel we had to run on the car was probably what was left over in the pipe because nothing had he had nothing left in the tank if i'm not mistaken that was that? it was the the fuel pump failure the first fuel pump failed yeah which stopped him out and yeah. then he had to the he had to go on to the the secondary fuel pump to yeah. try and get him going and get him back but That's at that it. point it was also not much left in the tank that they were playing with so yeah, yeah a little bit of try get the car back but also you've only got 1.2 liters left in the tank and you're on your second fuel, you're on your reserve fuel pump yeah it's a little bit of a difficult one but then you've got you know that's what the gt3s have got they have got these systems in place like the genetas they got this, the the geneta that we saw earlier that's got systems in place like that but cars that don't have systems like that in place is your back off roads because your nash your juno they don't have reserves in it. The pole beam doesn't have these reserve pumps yeah. because it's keeping the cost down. Because remember, that's all it is, yeah. is you're trying to keep the cost down in your racing. The, the, the faster you go, the bigger stuff you climb into, well, the price tends to add a few more zeros at the end. And you can only go as far as your budget will take you. Yeah, absolutely. And right now we need to go as far as four hours and a decent budget can take us. And so far, if you're just joining us, we're 10 minutes from the halfway mark. We've had three safety cars, and this has been the longest stretch we've had under a safety car. So it be a more back cars, a beach somewhere in the middle of the street. Um, driver is fine, like quite an instant, because we've had so far, and the recovery vehicle is on the lines. Uh, the cars um, filed behind the safety car that is one of steve's personal that, favorites they are that's the pasty racing team going and uh bringing the car in and you can see the Torres family just moving the car getting a little bit of assistance as well from all the other teams nice to see the guys all working together just to get the car in and going to do a little bit of work on it while they've got the long safety car uh, it does look like that might be a bomb tourist that's uh and just start directing traffic as they pull their car in it it's i mean this is always a, a difficult case of slow going in the dark and you're just trying to keep yourself going you're trying to make yourself the team's trying to motivate itself uh, it's getting colder and colder out there and when you get going it's a brand brand spanking new race so they're doing a bit of work trying to get the car in to go do a bit of work a little bit of directing of traffic you know, hopefully we can find out what's going on with the car that they they're causing it to go back into the pit i'm sure this is not going to be the pit stop they that they wanted yeah. at that point certainly not a planned one but you speak about motivating yourself i think racing drivers are the most competitive planet and that doubt yeah. all right so we are getting reports that Nadine is actually going to find out. Nadine, down to you, our reporter on the ground. I'm here with Petty Racing the Manager. Um, they've just come out into the pits. What happened? Uh, we have a drive shaft failure, drive shaft in the car. We don't understand why. They were both brand new drive shafts. You put new drive shafts in the car, and it just failed uh, when he changed gear when he was driving around behind the safe car. So we'll try and see if we can get it out and get it back in the door. Okay. Well, we're hoping for this for you. Say again? We're hoping for the best for you. Thank you very much, Nadine. Much appreciated. Thanks, it's guys. Good luck. Thanks. Big boss, Franz Burp, before we just giving a slowdown on that one of uh, a drive off failure coming into play. And very clear, I just did not for it to give up the most turn. That car has been doing quite a fair amount of racing. 
through the season. So maybe where it's starting to show, at that point, we're going to do some work on to get it out of the Knowing the best race, we will see that car going back on the circuit. We will see the guys go and take the checkered flag because that's what they're get to see the checkered flag, go out, have a ton of fun, and uh, really show off what they can do. You can see the, the, the bit of, we'll get it, don't worry, and then the serious face yeah. comes in. <laughs> but I think I have high hopes for them to get their car back up because I think there was a similar issue back at Red Star with uh, yeah. Doesn't right off left and I have fingers at my bit of the backdraft class, at least when it comes to replacing parts fairly quickly and without too much difficulty. So I think yeah, we're definitely gonna see that car back onto the circuit. Yeah, it's uh, honestly going and chatting to uh, like Chase Harold, who is out uh, at PE at the moment, uh, saying that the the weather is actually quite nice there. No wind, perfect weather, but it is getting a little bit cooler. But, uh, not too bothered with it going on. So well, at least the positive news that, uh, as the guys go around. It's, if it's not too chilly, that's, that's always great stuff. It's one thing about being in an open car that a little bit worrying is. Uh, where you go, start feeling the chills that in a tilt up close allows to going over the keys that is have cars warm inside cars. Back cars lash, you know it's gonna be a, you're gonna be a bit cold. But Nadine is down in the pits walking around and getting us all the low down on the information. So Nadine Please let us know what's happening. I'm standing in the pits with Andrew Rackshaw. You guys started on pole. You're encountering a couple of problems. What's happening? Yeah, I mean, it started off well. The first lap, we got quite a good uh, distance between myself and Suya, which was the whole plan. And then ever since lap two, we started losing more and more and more power. Um, and the engine just ran, kept getting leaner and leaner and leaner uh, until the point we had to come and pit. But the team is doing an amazing job to try and fix it. Uh, I mean, that's a spirit of endurance racing. It's just unfortunate because it puts, it puts us out for the race win. Uh, but yeah, hopefully they fix it and then Craig can do some laps. Okay, well, we're wishing you all the best and hope your team can put it together. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Back to the studio. So, a uh, bit of problems coming in for the Nova on its uh, debut endurance outing. It has driven previously in a sprint race, but it seems like a little bit of gremlins to work out. And, uh, sorry, that wasn't the, the Nova. That was actually the Janetta Andrew Rachel. Uh, do forgive me for that. The Janetta having a problem. They're managing to get it going. But, uh, you know, after such a dominant run, the Janetta, uh, gremlins starting to creep in. The Janetta has gone out of Times to do apologize. Uh, it isn't the Nova MP02, it is the Janetta prototype, but having uh, a little bit of problems on its on its way here. Uh, the <laughs> Is, yeah, the race, is, the race against your competitors and the race against the race itself. And of course, let us come into it. And yeah, it's, it's just carbon. I don't know, it's it's a fair, fair meeting out of Murphy's Law, at least. Some cars we've had pretty bad luck in previous races. Smooth running this time around is being distributed evenly to everyone else, I'm sure. I'm sure they really Example, the likes of Stuart White and Kolele Litlaka, Gremlin free so far, great for them at the head of the last head. There's a point that's still a point to pop them up. And the safety car could be a huge impact on the team. I'm not looking to pop it all. Are we there in second place in the last game of color range? Third, take that. And then just drop it. Nice. Head of Class EC's uh, Gerald Basin number 31, 
of course, we just had a chat with some another of the class E class uh, cars, rather. That was the backdraft of that. Um, was, that was the pasty racing machine. Hundred percent. Um, and there's a bit of a uh, drive shaft issue they have to overcome there, and it's possible for them to overcome it uh, with enough time for them to get back into the race. We've seen it done before. It's possible for them to do it, and they're getting some work underway there. In second place in class E, Evan Wood. Third is Harvey in the Oh, uh, just to have a little bit of fun. I want to. I want to ask. Do you know what the safety car's lap time is? I don't. What a random. Okay, didn't expect that. What? 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 What is it? Uh, at the moment, our leader doing one fifty eight point six behind safety car. Safety car is roughly about 0.4 of a second head. So he's also sitting at doing a 158.2, 158.3. Is that what? I saw you, I saw you blankly staring at the screen. So that was what you were quite, that's what you were calculating. You <laughs> Random bits of knowledge yeah. you can have around basketball. <laughs> yeah, you have a unique. So, uh, talking about getting information, Nadine's going to give us some more more important information down in the pits. Nadine, over to you. I'm here with Stuart White in the pits. Um, you guys are currently in the lead. Uh, your partner's in the car, and what does this do for your strategy? Um, you'll be currently dealing with a safety car issue because it was a bit of a bump. Um, yeah, so what's your strategy now? Obviously, your fuel consumption, the tyres, everything's going to take effect. Yeah, it definitely plays a big role. I mean, firstly, I'm just happy that the driver that was in the accident is all right. It took a while to, to repair the, the tire barrier. It does change the strategy a little bit. It maybe also helps us a bit because we know that we'll be able to run with, um, without it, with only one more stop towards the end. So we're happy with that. Um, I think currently we're looking really strong. The tire wear and stuff seems to be good on the car where some of our competitors are maybe struggling a little bit more. So now we're very happy so far. Lily has improved uh, a lot over the last few weeks. So excited to see what he does now in the race. And I think um, if we just keep our noses clean, we should be there in the end. It's obviously going to be very tight. Um, still only 10 seconds in front of the Mercedes. They gained a, a lap back with the safety car. So, um, but it goes that way. Sometimes you gain, sometimes you lose. So we just need to keep working on our own strategy and see how it goes when the check and flag drops. Okay, well, there you hear it from Stuart White. We wish you guys all the best. Um, back to Steve and Prince in the studio. And we will be good to go racing. All right. Well, thank you for a bit of information from Stuart White, giving us a bit of insight. And uh, just to catch you up after the last uh, two, while well, we hit the halfway mark, two hours and one minute completed, the first hour was a battle for the SAGT and SA uh, Dash, one hour Dash. The guys duked it out. Mark Stephen getting the overall win on that one, and also the overall win for the SAGT. Silver Scrabanti finishing up in second place. We did see within the first one hour, we actually saw within the, the first eight minutes, unfortunately, Isaac Spies uh, going, and and going and crashing into the wall in through the final corner. He landed up with a fair amount of damage to his car, which brought out the first of our safety cars that uh, came out. Then we have had a lot more racing going on. Unfortunately, another accident took place that has created the longest of the safety cars and just hearing a little bit to the commentators in the background that are at the circuit uh, the marshal posts are starting to get back in order and that was actually the class e car of the morgan rude ford and mazda unfortunately losing it through the infield and having one big crash also within the, the first hour and a bit we did see well the first hour did see the collision between Elder Scrabanti and uh, Marius Jackson. Uh, just on the corner, they've been in the park. Uh, far away! Uh, with Elder Scrabanti and his players. At the moment, the stance drivers are trying to get themselves back into a running order. 
it's three second calls. The first one was a GT3 interval. The second one was uh, Graham, who was racing in the class. Unfortunately, having a problem, he went into the wall and landed up with a bit of damage to Trevor Graham. Turn one, putting in the wall, turning that back off road, the road spin into a bit of a U. And then our third one, the Morgan Root car, and losing it in through the end field so, and landing up with some severe damage on his car, along with all three of those cars, getting the, all three of them hit the wall hard enough that the tire barriers needed to be repaired after the collision. So that was a pesty racing. Pesty racing. There you go. Bright orange pesty racing car just pulled in. I think it's the 262 car, if I'm yes. not mistaken. Has a drive shaft issue um, that has to be um, solved as quickly as possible. And a couple of minutes ago, that car just peeled into the garage and the team was working profusely to get it back in condition. So we've also got Nadine down in the pits to give us a little bit of an insight. She's been running up and down. So Nadine, over to you. It's a bit of an insight to what's happening down there at the uh, Elders Front. Looks like we are going to be respawning. So we're going to go and follow the restart after quite some time behind the second car. Like Wolf. And I'm sure a lot of drivers are going, yes, let's do this rock and roll. And uh, I know that you know, the big thing is he's come out behind the second car. Now proper time to go and put his foot down and get running away from again. He's probably doing it. It's now an outright charge and the Teka not hanging around. He opens up the throttle, tries to accelerate. Those tires are going to be ice cold. All the drivers break with the ice cold. Also, our faster cars now trying to make their way around our Class E's and Class D's as they make their way around here at Eldo Scribanti in the dark for the four hour endurance race. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's a good it's a good thing where the guys are properly trying to get as fast as possible. They're trying to close down the distance and uh, get a little bit better in their drive. So let's see how it's going to work out as the race continues. The sense one of these races to figure out what worked for them. What's the new strategies coming into play because now they are over the halfway mark and they're going to have to figure out what's going to be the next step. Are they going to do one or two stops again or are they going to land up with more of a problem? Let's start with the obvious one. We're definitely going to see some lap time drops. <laughs> I think we've had a good 15 to 20 minutes of the slowest possible running for the day. So, um, the first thing is just establishing a decent pace to maintain for at least an hour, I imagine. The amount of time we spend on this I imagine might have nullified the um, possibility of any pit stops anytime soon. I don't see any cars stopping in the next 30 minutes. Oh, we've got a car on the grass. That, that looks like... That's the Bobby. Yeah, that's, that's the Hawk Motorsport that uh, landed into the weeds in. That's the that I think that's just the combination of all brakes and all yeah. brakes. And, uh, okay, we're just putting a report from our camera crew and directors that that Hawk Motorsport Bobby was slowing down significantly to the point of... Uh, of an issue so our motorsports are going to be frantically getting on the radio to try and talk to one another figure out what's going on with that car hopefully they can get back into the pit and uh we'll be frantically working to figure out what's going on how to get it and get back out on the circuit but it's just one of these things the race just restarted but for some odd reason something argued in a situation like this where the guys are racing around quite a few of these cars they don't have fans built in so you know in traffic you go and stop your car you call it you're waiting 
the car has a fan that turns on and helps cool everything down, keeps temperature down. Yeah. For a lot of these cars, like the Nash, like the, the Pearl Beam, they don't actually have cooling fans. They rely on heat of the radiators to cool the, cool the water down, and that's the way it works. It's well, that's out of place. We don't want to get rid of it. The problem is they've been behind the station car for so long, and behind another car, that's it's there's no flow getting through it, and that temperature gauge which was swapped on rather quickly, even on the coldest of nights. Oh, can not imagine? Because the only fan is your ambition and how fast you have to go. You want to cross the big and open in those type of cars at the very least. But I saw, I wonder what the issue is there with that tool beam. Uh, hopefully, we can get a bit more information. It's very unfortunate to see. It doesn't look like a safety car worthy thing. But at the moment, which is a great thing to hear. Yes. Janetta, some work being done on the Janetta there. We saw that had to pull out. Andrew Rats, uh, Rackstraw was delivering the news to Nadine there that some issues had to be overcome. Looks like they're working on the part of the engine. It looks like it doesn't look like a box outside of the engine. Now that's the head off it for some odd reason. Oh, safety car! Prince? 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 Do not look at me. Okay, for everyone out there, I'm sending Prince yeah, home. Prince, we're going home. Going home. You touched your phone. That's what happened. Go ahead. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. We are rather unfortunate to have another state of the one would gather because a car stopping at the middle of the fall. They raced the car, the car is back in. Thank goodness. Ooh, that was close. And I saw those cars that just my heart sank. We managed to recover the pull beam relatively quickly. So, yeah, we can anticipate a bit of a scoop from Nadine for later on. But as far as we have it for the time being, it's normal racing resuming and it's into Africa at the head of the field. Uh, Graham Nathan. Trails, he just came in and out of the shot very quickly there in the Super Cup Polo. He trails Cara Hill in that class, but he's well. Cara Hill is out the car. Yuri's plot. Oh, and he's That was kind of safe. Oh, yeah. So, Yuri's plot, how in the car remember? Yuri's plot has been disconnected very good. He is racing. He's super crazy. And now, for a four hour in the car. So, um, hasn't that much fun with that one. Daniel Rowe, as well, jumping into the car. He's taken over Graham Nathan, and they're battling it out for 6th and 7th overall, but 1st and 2nd in class as they get the power down. Charles Arangis taking 1st place, though. He's getting ahead of Zoloteca, so Charles Arangis didn't hang around to go in if, on a proper charge. But in shot now, that is Yuri Swat chasing down the likes of Daniel Rowe just ahead of him, trying to push as hard as he can. Daniel Rowe is going to try and stretch open the gap, but that Kalix machine is right on the back of the VW Motorsport Super Cup. The Class D battle is starting to heat up once again. And I've got to say, one thing about the endurance racing is I've been really, really happy with Class D. But how you feel it yet? Having to do a that draws our class D. Ready to propose the Well, all around you is in the dark. What's the memory? You were talking about muscle. Stop it. Basically, I'm still though, out of that car wasn't that nice. It is reflective of how uh, and this is definitely interesting to see how he established himself in terms of race pace at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be a proper run. Our class E's keeping into a bit of a battle. Our PPL uh, Backdraft Roadster having a great fun to really go. Our PPL group and Adept going and uh, battling it out. We did see Dean Wilson having a fantastic route, and he's trying to get a little bit more of a run, but also getting chased down in the process. So they've got to be so cautious of uh, making a bit of a 
chase here. They did hand over to Mark Harvey, who's currently in the car. He's lying in 10th place. Class easy. He's trying to chase down Gavin Rook and Gerald Pays ahead of him. He's got a few big back. Right, he goes down the distance. Gavin Pays. And in 12th place is our member, who was in the Hillbeam Harp Motorsport Hillbeam is a, a little bit further down the order so he's trying to make up some time and move his way through the field so a couple of guys having to try and figure out what to do as they make their way through interesting to see gerald base taking over from andrew horn he's lying in eighth place so the nash doing a fantastic job at the moment despite the no power in the car compared to his the rest of the field well, the rest of the Last time we saw him run out was quite a while ago. I think he was actually in, in the, the one, one hour, hour dash ah, as well. I was looking forward to seeing him for the four hour, but I guess that, it kind of makes sense. I mean, it is a tough, tough, tough challenge to, to, to build a mechanical car for four hour race. Now that's the thing, uh, a race like that is very hard getting a race actually doing this lap. Well, here's out Daniel Rowe going in as a as well. So these guys are doing personal best even though it's dark. Now I wonder, are they getting faster because they're getting in their stride? Or they're getting faster because they're missing the brake markers and trying to uh, catch up. <laughs> There's a very fine line between the two, I think. And that's what makes them racing drivers, trying to control <laughs> that little dynamic. But I'll tell you what, uh, Yuri Swart, this is characteristic of him. Very aggressive every time he steps into the car. He doesn't seem to start these uh, endurance stints, at, at least as far as my memory takes me back when it comes to the four hour and nine hour races. But Uh, he relies on the uh, car, I think the energy of uh, Corey Hill to be large the way through. Corey Hill has been rather, rather consistent in her drives. Also is a safe bet for a great start. Yeah. You know that not going to take unnecessary risks. He's going to move you up through the field. And then you can try and concentrate on management there. Yeah. So you, you're playing two different strengths into this, which is great to see. She is incredibly quick, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But going for a safer bet of, okay, get us through, get it into the stride, work your way through it. I do think the, the choice of putting Yuri Swart in second for this is because he has been racing today. So the last thing you want to do is start with a fatigue driver in a very difficult race where you're going to be having a lot of fast machinery pushing you offline the whole time. There's more chance of something going wrong. And you'd rather go with a fresh driver going out, giving you more time, and have a little bit. Oh, 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 in the moment not only just the itself but also going and representing the flag in the international races as well and it's always fantastic to see the guys really putting it out there i do want to point out we do have Hink Lassikhan running in fourth place in the BBR Racing Porsche 992 Cup car. They are running second in the championship, trying to close down the distance to Charles Arangis, uh, who is currently leading out the championship. So they want to ensure they maximize the points at this, uh, at this point. They don't have the power. They don't have as much as what that GT3 can provide. But for a really proving it doesn't matter how much horsepower you've got underneath the knowledge, knowledge you've got in terms of tight control and probably all down that's what we are raising and we're 
barely missed out the championship last year. And you can be sure they've been frantically working behind the scenes to ensure that they can lock down the championship this year in 2023. High out. That is not going to be hard. They have a chance. I do believe they will overall championship just on their planning alone of consistency. I do feel though they have got a bit of an uphill to climb because the Dali team have been synonymous in the South African racing scene uh, in national championships, regional championships, club championships, yeah. the presentation of the vehicles, how they've put the whole thing together, their planning, the meticulous planning behind the scenes of it and also the preparation into the vehicles because they don't only just prepare their own car, they do prepare many of the cars that we have to feel today. Not just the Nova, just the big car that we've got, and that little bit of work. And I, I think we're, we see a battle of the giants in that respect. We've got two teams that are willing to put it all out on the line. But so far, it's all on Charles Rungis out in first place. But not to take away from Soli Lataka and the likes of Stuart White in the Inter Africa Lamborghini. They're running in second place. Well, we've seen Lataka can run incredibly fast times and be uh, consistent. We saw that in last year's championship. We're seeing it again. Stuart White coming out and really putting in absolutely mind boggling laps. Every single time he climbs into the car, he really wants to take the fight. It's brilliant to see Harvey Jubeir in the brand new Nova going in and out there's always great to see and in a new car that there's a little bit of work, a little bit of gremlins that have to deal with guys I can't wait for that car is now 100 feet we will see the Just for Sleep I do apologize to him as uh, Just for Sleep well I actually quite like that man um, <laughs> so the Just for T uh, Sleep team will be ensuring that they're going to take the fight out. So they actually used to, Nick Adcock was the, the Ad Call 24, which was the Legia. Yeah. But uh, the Just for Sleep being the name, I think it, it's rather suiting considering we're going into the night for the four-hour SAE race, round three here at the lovely track of Aldo Scribanti in Quebec. Just for very little sleep at the moment, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nail biting stuff. We were talking about how the and second be the PBR race, five points split the Mercedes have 93 points and. PBR racing have 88 so it really is everything going down to the wire at least up until this point in the championship so you can understand the level of intensity and and sort of nail biting um a moments that are going to build up as, as the more the race progresses in a, uh, I love the eighth. I really do. I can't compare to anything. It looks like there's been a change over there. It looks like uh, Daniel Rolls ahead of Yuri Swat at the moment. If I'm not mistaken, was that me? My eyes is fooling me. On the on the uh, the transponder and the timing, we have uh, Yuri Swat ahead of Daniel, and Yuri has been putting in. Fast lap after fast lap ahead of Daniel. He's just not holding back. He, he, on the timing and on the transponder, he keeps flashing green. And that tells you the man just keeps pushing, getting better laps. running in second place. Seven places, Daniel Rowe. It's Alex Way down the order for the jail place, he's having fun out in the Nash first class. He's it now has set of the class days overall, and you can just see Lamborghini saying hello and goodbye 
before <laughs> even crossing a line. He's got past uh, Gerald Bates, who's foot flat to the floor as in that Nash. But unfortunately, uh, there's no replacement for displacement in the place like this. Foot flat to the floor with no answers, unfortunately. Bit of curb there. That was interesting. But um, yeah, I think at this point, getting back into racing stride again, we had to wait a while for this to come. And you see Fire shooting out the exhaust of that Lamborghini. Um, fantastic scenes. Hit it. Work on and now we were in the place. It, uh, so we done. We were we've well crossed the halfway mark, and it was a difficult phase to enter into where we have a bit of a rhythm for everyone to sort of establish. Cable ties out the toolbox and ensure that after making a commentator's uh, saying like that, Prince, we've been in the game long enough, buddy. I'm trying, I'm trying to change my approach. I've been the guy who's saying they're more, um, not should I say it? I, I've been the guy who's been calling out the safety cars this entire time. So now I'm trying to change my approach and be, be more positive in what I'm anticipating. I am saying green flags until the finish. That's what I'm saying. But now you said it. Yeah. Okay, you understand that... In the case of an example, I don't think it applies. Is your middle name Murphy by any chance? <laughs> Maybe in Zulu it means, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it means Murphy. He needs to really pedal to the middle at this Oddly enough, uh, Daniel Rowe, some racing, uh, just a, a random one to check out there, goes and races the Mercedes AMG GT3 Evo, which is actually the same uh, chassis type car as the Stradale Mercedes. Oh, fantastic. So he does enjoy those type of cars. And uh, now the real world of racing type of car, was the last was racing as well. So, I hope my top of it, so. Love your life at the moment, being able to go everywhere around the country and go racing. These little reflexes must be sharp and ever there. I don't think anything really prepares you for four hours of flat out racing. No, not at all. Uh, I don't think anything can prepare you for this because the moment that you think, okay. I'm going to be able to set these lap times. I'm going to do this average lap time. This is my fuel, as we see. That is the Juno. Uh, 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 a fuel stop. The guys getting it all sorted out. We may see a change of driver as well. Uh, Byron Mitchell has been in the car for a fair amount of time. He's lying in fifth place at the moment. As uh, we see the Nash coming by, that is Gerald Bass behind the wheel. He's taken over from Andrew Horn, who has uh, been battling it out. So first of the class, he is trying to close down on Daniel Rowe ahead. But it's going to be interesting. Will Byron Mitchell be climbing out the car, handing it over and saying, right, now it's on to my teammates to go and make his way through, uh, considering a fair amount of time behind the safety car at this point. What happened? A bit left in him, maybe another 30 minutes. If he does do so, then he stays another 30 minutes. Is it a bad place to have you? I think he's going to be handing over to Peter Funders. I, so. I think Peter Funders is going to say, enough is enough. I want to also drive my car. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it, it looks like it's happening if my eyesight doesn't deceive me. Yeah, no, that's it. I think Peter Funders Bay has said, listen, I'm paying for the fuel. I want you out my car. <laughs> I want to drive. <laughs> right. that, that, that's the exact English, but it's going to look like it when, when, when he drives out of the pits in the car. That's for sure. 
put the helmet down and get going once again. Uh, Peter van der Spey was actually at SWAT Corps, went and beached the car on turn four, uh, yes, but was able to get that. it going yeah, once again. I remember that. Yeah. So, but the one thing I've got to say is it's nice to see right from all aspects of the country, whether you're in KZN, uh, whether you're out there in Kauteng, the guys are all jumping in from around the country, all into the series to go and duke it out and have a bit of fun. And remember, the winner of this SAE championship will become a national champion, which I mean, that is some serious bragging rights. That is something yeah. to truly treasure. And the only way you're going to get that is by putting in the work to ensure that you get to the front. Beautiful shot of uh, Charles Rungis in that Mercedes where you could see the front brakes glowing as he breaks into turn one and now trying to maneuver his way through the rest of the field. But uh, we did have a thing in our... Uh, Even with your professional, of what to try out for, what to look at, how to get yourself forward, what's the things that you time on, and also a bit of keeping an eye on safety, especially around the circuit. But they do also bring up some interesting facts for you guys that are big camera fanatics. They talk about different camera settings, whether it's your shutter speed, what is needed, your your ISO settings. These are all different stuff. It sounds like gibberish to you and me. But for anyone that is into the world of photography or videography, this is always fantastic to go and have that little bit of a discussion and always uh, the guys passing on a bit of information. So do take a look at our magazine out on the saesseries.com and that is actually our previous race and that's so where we have a lot of information on upcoming races on our social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and works go forward but you also do give us recaps of the races as well so keep an eye out that we do have programs released yep, where on our YouTube yep on our YouTube and Prince is the voice to that so you get to listen to the wonderful voice of Prince going and uh, giving us some insightful insights which we don't usually get to hear too much on race day but just after race day when the stories come through yeah everything has been in hindsight <laughs> Work there, uh, no one is too humble. And dreaming agile, this makes it hard. I'm not even running it. Don't get on the throttle Not just yet. yet. Wait, yet, wait, yeah. wait. Because the excitement's starting to kick in. Arnold wants to get out and yeah. get going. Arnold Neveling, also a major player, a major name that's also represented the South African flag on numerous occasions, has yeah. come out and done plenty of racing. Whether you've been in a go-kart, whether you've been in a tin top, he's jumped into pretty much anything that has four wheels and uh, goes out and has a huge amount of fun now mm -hmm. jumping in to the likes of the Mercedes GT3 and in the dark, out of all things, is going to be a rather challenging thing. So he's been watching the racing from outside perspective, 
but being in the car and trying to work out, right, what do I need to do to get back on pace and get going? But that has given the position back to Zoli Lateka. He's taken first place back. As well. So keep an eye out on that. So the first three still in for a fight. But don't think Hink Lartekhan's too much out of it because the BBR Racing team are going to be changing Hink out of the car, put in, uh, go and change the drivers out, get him back out, and get going for the remaining bits of the race. But two hours and 33 minutes done and dusted. Can you believe it? It honestly feels like it's been 15 minutes of racing, and the guys have really been putting some tremendous work out there from the front to the back of the grid. And speaking of tremendous work at e any position of the grid, really, in Class E, Harum Pretorius' uh, backdraft 262 there, some work I think is still being done on the car. We don't know. They haven't peeled back into um, the race as yet. We know they've been working on a drive shaft issue that the car has succumbed to, I think, it was 30. they can um, get themselves back up and running. But I want to see what Ari Neverling's lap times are going to look like. Of course, the most recent one was a bit slow because of the pit stop. And how is he going to stamp his authority on it? Immediately, a sub one minute time. Fin five from Arnold Neverling, living up to reputation. Okay, so you know when I said that he's going to take time to get in his stride? <laughs> that was the first 10 meters of the pit lane. Uh, thanks, Arnold. You, uh, you've proven me uh, completely wrong of getting into your stride that was about 10 meters yeah, no, no. When, you, when you figured out how to put it into first gear that was pretty much uh pretty much that done and dusted going and putting a sub one minute time in the dark oh, It's absolutely, that is what we love to see the guys able to get the cars back out and racing once again. Um, it's it's going to be a proper charge to the end, but out in front for our D-Class is Yuri Swart with Daniel Rowe, one lap behind him. But our Janetta now back onto the circuit, which is good to see, but a lot of work needed to claw his way back up through the field. Yeah, a lot of catching up to do. I think catching up is a bit out of reach at the moment. Uh, hoping for... Hoping for a clean uh, finish to the race, and there was enough time, I suppose, long enough for them to overcome whatever issue that was. It really did did not seem like light work that had to be done there. But it's, it's always good to have a massive team, fully competent and able to get the the, the car running again. But if you just joined us, um, for, for some reason you were late to attend um, our drop of the flag, our lights out. We've had a full day's racing. So so much has happened um, from the one hour sprint early on in the to the uh, four-hour race that has begun and is two and a half hours across what a uh, one hour and a bit remaining of this race and plenty has happened during this race in itself we've had three four safety cars but three four safety cars in the third
with you. That slowed us down, but we're back underway. Racing is underway. A lot of pit stops have happened and occurred. Strategies being lined up and playing out, hopefully as planned. And a few casualties too. Three or four cars have peeled off and had to pull into the pit lane. Um, some irreparable damage, some meetings with the tires, uh, some uh, mechanical. And we've got a backdraft car that's being worked on at the moment with a dry soft issue. You see the glowing brakes of that BBR 992. It's fantastic. And if you want to be able to catch shots of that, Steve segued into something really interesting. If you're into your camera work and photography, you can catch some information on how to get your camera setting um, to be able to capture such amazing shots um, at the SAES website. His first half, his first stint, and Kolele Taka is at the helm at the moment. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of an interesting one. I'm keeping an eye on the likes of Andrew Rackshaw, uh, who's in 16th place. They got that Janetta back out and going. Uh, they've only done 58 laps of the race compared to Kolele Taka, who has done 124, 125 laps now. So for the likes of Andrew Rackshaw to try and make up a bit of ground, he is 66 on first at qualifying and it just looks like it went downhill from there mm. so working on the motor as you pointed out the guys were working on the top of the motor they had their head off trying to just do a bit of work on it try and figure out what's going on maybe there was a, a something that just didn't want to play right so at this point it's now find out get going did we solve the problem and utilize anything we can to try and just get to the chat get to the checkered flag because Remember, every time you cross that checkered flag from every race, doesn't matter how far down you are in the field, there might be someone that's less fortunate in uh, not able to finish a race. Again. Driver change, get it back out for the Hop Motorsports team, and uh, let's see who. I think it's uh, uh, Bapu Pobulus are jumping back into the car. We saw him running earlier on in the race, and they should be done with their pit, as so should the uh, 
pill beam. I see the lights flashing on now. It's probably going to pull. Uh, I think. Only allowed two on the tires, one for refueling, one in and out. Our photographers also getting a bit of shots out there. Good to see our photographers. Usually behind the lens, it's good to see them sometimes in front of the lens. Uh, I do want to point that out because they they're pretty much like the mythical unicorn. You hear about them, but you don't get to see them in front of the lens. Again, Court though, but they're also getting some great shots out there. Uh, I do want to point out that uh, last time I saw Stuart White going and climbing out of a GT or getting someone out of a GT3 car uh, overseas, it was less graceful of open the door and let the guys out, or grab the overalls and throw them out the car. So, uh, Out of respect, you, you can't just grab the car by the collar. Being himself past the Nova, there immediately being being steward right, being fully himself, you'll see the car immediately changes body language. It becomes very more, very much more aggressive in its handling as um, we re-establish an order there. Looking at Ari Neveling now at the front because of the number 25 peeling in for the pit stop and driver change. Uh, the number 25 of Stuart White in second place. James Sweetman in third at the moment with Henk Latekhan in fifth. Obviously taking the place of Ari Latekhan. BW Motorsports um, to cover and make up for for the duration of or for the remainder rather of the race in eighth place we've got Gavin Rook in seventh Mark Harvey and Gerald Bass in class E is in tenth um, bringing up the top ten there yeah yeah it's it's honestly gonna be a, an interesting thing to for the drivers to keep an eye out for as they power their way through the circuit going to be the last because our mark one hour and three minutes of the race for our you don't want to see the race end can we continue on for the hour At this point, it's just taking a look, make sure everything's okay. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's now it's it's not, it's not a race. It's a, it's a, it's a 
And I can see the driver, they're motioning that something is going on with his hands. So they, they are trying to figure something out and see what's, what's going on with the car. It's screen flashing. They have, of course, a lot of technology behind the running of the Geneta. So it, it only explains it further why it's only running. The thing that definitely find the time available in is that just out here, out Now that's it, and uh, a lot of the, a lot of the team looking at it, Thomas, and uh, you can see just again, guys, monitoring everything. A, a ginger stripe. I think Craig Jarvis is uh, going to be jumping into the car. We will be getting out. I've got to say, at least, I love prototypes. Compared to a car, prototypes are the most So that's probably why I like it, to be honest. Uh, but just the, the enclosed feeling, the you know, being a super, super light car, and just how it's, it's built. Even the Geneta just looks absolutely stunning. Whether it's standing still or going quick, it's just one of those beautiful cars, much like the Nova out there. Then you also got the likes of a the car beast on the side at the moment. That's the Nash. Oh yeah. They were just in looking at the suspension. Is that Gerald Base in the car? That is Gerald Base in oh, the car. Dear. That is first of the class E's. Well, was first of the class E's. That's now stopped on the side of the circuit. But you touched your phone. I just want to point that out. You touched your phone. <laughs> what is this? Oh, uh, oh, I see a bit of water leak out the front of the car. Yep. Or the number four car. Who's that? That's Kevin Brooks. Kevin Brooks. And it's um, back in front of you. You pull the car and it looks like a vacuum. That wasn't the jack, that was the fuel line that was the fuel line. The guys trying to move the car a little bit forward, they weren't able to uh, get that fuel line to work in the cup of So, well, that's it. I actually want to give this up. The, the first fuel line didn't want to work. they now going yeah, under, under safety car conditions. So, now you've got a little bit of a, I think it's, there would be safety car conditions considering the, the car out there. Yes, safety car is confirmed to go and get recovery of the the Nash, mo the Zena Chemicals Nash. They'll be going out. That's Andrew Horn and Gerald Bass's car. So safety car is out and will be picking up the leader. But I do want to point out, all fuel lines not working. What are you going to do? The other team ahead of you that's part of the back cross is, hey, don't worry. Just move the car yeah, forward, roll it forward, we all connect it to ours. Exactly. There we go, put it up. That was really quick. quick, 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 quick. Yep. Also got a safety class of big advantage of time to put out the issue. It looks like it be from the radiator. Yeah, they can put that in time. Benji, at the time, I never get tired of this. That is fantastic. It's amazing. Brilliant to see it out of the local circuit. So hopefully, more. Because of this build, I can press down and expand as well as with the video. Enjoyed a spectacular nearly three hours now. I can say for certain that we will see more of the the more prototypes, the, the, the fancier cars coming out and having a bit of fun. Mm. The cars that I do want to see come out is we the in past, I know in motorsport, we do have a pull beam LMP car that landed in South Africa a couple of years back. 
I would also like to see that um, the Bailey LMP car to come also have a race because it's built for endurance racing. What better than to do them? Put it in an endurance race. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to see those cars coming up, but I'd also like to see a bit of the, the lower fund. Well, when I say lower fund, I mean the, the, the more of the cheaper cars coming up. Into the, the cost of like having a super car out there, I'd like to see those coming out. I'd also like to see more for like the Nashes. There's quite a few of them yeah, in existence. Quite the wish list. Also, one car that has been around since uh well the early uh, in the mid to uh, mid 90s and raced in the early 2000s was part of the Vod the vodacom series which was sports 2000 there's numerous chassis lying around as a uh, well there we go there's the nash being moved but there's numerous chassis of the sports 2000s that are out there that i'd like to see those cars return they are literally opal transverse engines going great so let's go and uh, take a look. Just here, yeah, that is used on basic race. So that Dean is done in the plane. So they give us a bit of the inside scoop. I'm here with Francois from Pesty Racing, and we've got an update. They are back on, back on the track, and they're back in action. So tell us about it. Okay, we as we said earlier, we had a drive shaft, a drive shaft failure, which was pretty unfortunate. Um, in these backdrops, it does take a bit of time to change them because they're not built primarily as race cars. When a race car is built from an engineering point of view, so you can change this quickly. It took us a bit of time. Um, I'm very impressed and very thankful to Naldo and our whole team. They did a brilliant job. The car is back on track, and now Barrett has to drive his smelly backside off so we can make sure that we actually get enough laps to be classified as a finisher. So. Well, I'm glad you've got the team you do, and what an incredible team they have. Back to Stephen and Prince of the studio. Thank you, Nadine, on the information. And I've got to say, I do love hearing uh, Franco because he, he calls he calls it as it is. If it's a, if it's a kettle, it's a kettle. That's it, and that's what it is. The the backdraft racing machines are not built as primarily racing vehicles. They do utilize uh, BMW suspension join uh, suspension to try and get them going, which is from a road car, uh, and that's. Down on them as uh, that is the uh, RS portion. And it looks like Heinrich was well, so I think he'll be climbing out. It's either Heinrich or that's the virus that's looking around. I'm not 100% sure. That might, I'll have to, I'm not 100% sure of who that might be. It's between the two. I'm telling you, it's between the two. Um, also, in the background, I do see a Ford Escort Mark II in golf cars. FYI, Steve Koenig is an encyclopedia. In case you were wondering, ask him any question in the YouTube comments, and I'm pretty confident he'd be able to answer it as long as it's very stimulated. He could shock you and start answering. But it comes to race. We have seen Hank have a stint, we've seen Hein have a stint. Where I don't I don't recall seeing um Tavares actually have his go um if he's around today. So yeah, so, the people are back out on the circuit and I'd imagine he'd be in a rush to get the tires and brakes hot again before you've got too much traffic to deal with to slow you down. Yeah, let's see where it's all going to go. Uh but we'll see on the timing screen as they come by. I do think Hank will be climbing out the car and handing it over to either uh Tavares. Yeah. Or will be handing over to the likes of uh, his dad, Heinrich Lartekhan, also known as Hein Lartekhan, who raced in single seaters many years ago. Just chucking that one out there as well. Uh, when you talk about encyclopedia of knowledge, um, I don't quite think so, actually. <laughs> uh, I think if you want to have an encyclopedia of knowledge, that's going to be our race write ups done by Google. Because uh, maybe it's one of these guys awesome. Dave can find out 
any story out there. He goes and figures out. He talks to guys, moves around, also takes some phenomenal photos. And I'm going to say, Dave, I did go and keep a couple of photos on my computer of your stuff. So uh, I do apologize, <laughs> especially when it happens to me at McLaren. Just putting it out there. I won't take the photo of the process. Thank you. All of them. Out. You buy the neck and doing well at that. It seems bring it out in front of the house here and get the field overall. Only really in first place, of course. I think this is the first time of the in class A. She's got 58 7, and the best time they've done all day was a 58 5. So he's very close to their fastest pace there at Stradale Motorsport. Fantastic stuff by him and absolutely carrying uh, the baton there from Charlie Ranges. And I'll see how long he stays in this car. It's possible that he may just finish that stint. But uh, we're we to, we to enter or pass the three hour mark of the race. We're just shy of three hours if you just joined us. Let's be right. Be right into the place. Now, we're they're trying to resolve their issues, get some water back into the system. If they've managed to catch up where the lead was, it looks like it's still is a lead. It looks like it's still lead. I do want to point out Steve Clark was originally in the backdraft slingshot 2.0 car. Yes, yes, he was. He yes, was, yes. and that, yeah. that unfortunately had it actually <laughs> No, no, in two, in two other cars, one, one being a Lamborghini. I, did, I couldn't recognize the third. That's I, fantastic. I, I think the only Lambo out is Dewey White, who's yep. trying to get past, and oh. he sends it. There you go. And he's right Jeez. up against the back of that pull beam, and now oh, is fantastic. doing everything he can. The hot most for pull beam really trucking along. But Dewey White just not taking any, any, uh, well, any prisoners at this point. He's trying to close down the distance to Arnold Neveling. But take a look in the dark. I want to point this out. It's Black out there, guys are still doing good. I'm on his last back. I mean, Of the um, that 262, the, the, the class E backdraft car, Baron Pretorius, there he's also flashing on our screens, putting the fastest laps he's put on as yet with a one minute nine and point two. So he's definitely pushing as hard as he can in class. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful photo of that you know, going in yeah. and make his way around, bottoming out, spots coming out. It's all blowing great. You can see physically yeah. the brake is blowing. Uh, I do want to point out, remember when I said Dave was trying to all the information? As I mentioned, there was something going on with PDR racing and the music part and the music guy around it. Dave was trying to get his car in the world, keeping an eye on him. So, yeah, as I see, Dave will be able to find you. So a big thank you to David uh, on, on going and giving us some information. But as you can see, some work being done on that number four. And not usually good when you see guys topping water up in a car. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's back to basics at that point. And you wonder if it's going to be something that repeats and comes back. I hope they've, they've at least found where the issue was. And they're topping up water knowing that they're going to be ready to be comfortable for the next hour or so. Uh, but yeah, it looks like some more work in the That's just the driver being put up the top of the It looks... There we go, yeah, some straps being pulled and making sure the driver's okay. Uh, grab the socket and the ratchet and... Hi. What looks are like they... he's loosening that anti-clock wires. That what? looks yeah, something's being loosened there. Well, ooh, there's a lot of work going on with that clock. A lot more than before. It's probably good for that I've done a review. 
Yeah, yeah no, no, it would be interesting to see from a different angle to, uh, and get the camera to road state, but we don't want to interview with the stuff yeah. uh, as well because nothing's more irritating. I mean, you and I both know this, where you're busy frantically working on something, it's you know, kind of camera in there, it's just uh, eventually getting a, your elbow out, but we don't want to interview with the stuff It would be nice to see what's going on. This is why I do like the guys having the overhead cams to shoot straight down, where we can actually see what's happening on the top of the special engine bay is straight down. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's, it's, a, that, it's niceties to have, but at the same time, it's, it's very good. And, yeah, so it, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be interesting to do this how it all works out and where it's going to be so let's keep an eye on it to see what's going to happen they were as you said loosening something on the motor but they were so far up in the field uh you know steve clark jumping into the car now into 12th place i do want to give it up for the the cubana uh, the cubana team you know i hope i pronounced that correctly uh, because it's just one of the, one of the teams I love seeing and I love being around. Because every time you go have a chat to them, yeah. it's just a festival atmosphere. Absolutely. And whether they yeah. at the back of the field or at the front, they just absolutely fantastic to have a chat to. Always so positive and considering so high up in the class, he's going to be quite happy with that. Yeah, enjoy having a fat chat with Figile. Very, very uh, friendly, very open about his team, and yeah, definitely a festive spirit in the mood. That racing driver down uh, to, to the mechanics. But Nadine and Charlotte Ranges have had a bit of a, a meetup. But let's see what we have going. I'm standing here chatting to Charlotte Ranges, the current leader of the South African Endurance Series. Charles, you started on the second line. Um, there's one hour left of the race. You guys managed to pull to the lead. Tell us, you know, how are you feeling for the last hour? Look, we, uh, we unfortunately have um, been Enough pace uh, to really fight against Stewart and Collier. You know, we uh, we're running a full-on GT3 spec car for this weekend. So, uh, you know, the restricted line, unfortunately, holding us back a bit. But more than that, we've been able to uh, fight from third to the lead. Uh, I mean, kudos to the team uh, and, and the management, my dad. And actually, that being been uh, harder work on the pit wall, you know, getting the, the, the strategy right. So, we, uh, yeah, we, I mean, now it's just hoping that we get the end on this tank of fuel. If we can do that, uh, we might have a chance. But yeah, still we're just getting to the So, yeah, but we have to get it. But yeah, it's just what Okay, well, we're wishing you guys all the best. Thank and you. yeah, don't don't stop pushing. No, we won't. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Joel. Back to studio. Oh, thank you very much, Nadine. Also, just giving a bit of insight there, having a chat to the drivers. And uh, while she was going and chatting about it, and we heard that they they are worried about Stuart White gaining rapidly, it's also been noted by other teams that, listen, these GT3s are going to get into a fight soon, and uh, there is a, a bit of positionings going on. So James Sweetman, who's going to be really stomping on the gas now, Realize getting reports of these two are going to battle it out. You have a chance here because they're going to slow each other up. So just try close the distance at this point. So we may see that Nova going out. And I do want to point out a bit of information. This actually does come back from, and I'm going to give it out to a source of Tristan Denorbrigger going and letting us know. It's always fantastic. See, uh, Tristan saying it is the first time um, that uh, James has gone out and having a bit of fun. First time in SA. He hasn't been here before, and he's just landed on, landed on. He flew in three days ago, and he loves the weather. Absolutely loves it. Um, I think it's a bit cooler. I think summer weather would be an option, but he definitely, you know, it's a bit of information there. And it's, I love to see this, because I do get the WhatsApps from the guys that are at the tracks, just giving us a bit of information. So just a big shout out to the teams that are sending, a, uh, sending us messages over the different social medias. Uh, uh, and also in private just to say, hey, listen, this is the story that's going on because it's just nice to have the eyes and ears and you can't be everywhere. Even if at the racetrack, 
you can't be running up the pit down the uh, pit lane. We're not like our reporter Nadine, who can just <laughs> find out all the information. And uh, let's be honest, I think if you and I had to approach anyone with a microphone, they would run in yeah. the other direction we're, very quickly. We're work out the same. Someone is trying to run in the other direction. Or it's please, the same direction is three wide. Facing down, are we leveling? Two seconds in between, 1.9 seconds in between them at the moment. I'm laughing because as Nadine was chatting to, to Charlotte Ranji, Shaw was saying to Sakunga, in that space of time, in that immediate moment, as you're speaking about that, Stewie White is coming back it could be the next corner or the next apex where these two gt3 cars are coming together there's a big fight happening and you're right james sweetman really has to be close or close enough to sort of pick up the spoils if that happens but knowing stewie white he, oh, oh, here we go okay got, they've got to get past one of the backdrops i think that is the pesty racing okay clean work there nothing too disturbing of this uh front two battle there with the gt3 cars and stewie white smell the exhaust streams of our nearbillings of mc gt3 definitely within within reach of making a move down the inside of our nearbillings it's just a question of where and how difficult are we going to make it for him does it look like he's oh, 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 go for a late and oh, and that's the right final corner left that's the final corner of the circuit and he's got the home straight all to himself it was inevitable it seems steve I uh, don't think you can count your chickens just before they hatch because knowing Arnold Neveling, he's going to put the fight in and get right up against the back of it. Stewie White, though, trying to make his way past, getting past one of the, the more of the prototype cars, and uh, that actually is the Juno. He's opening up the distance, but it is a long race. We still have a fair amount of time to go. 15 minutes, and we've just seen a change for the Stewie White of the Inter-African League going and launching themselves first place now having to try and open it this time this Charlie Mercedes race uh, custom race do you know that Charlie is no of the of which I can't stand the fallback stream wise it's really just going to pull the pin on the hand grenade and getting it not going but it's now all about getting that charge until that checkered flag drops you have crossed the line, you've loaded the car on the truck, and you drive in it's heading back to the factory. That is the only certain then you know that done the day is done. You will know there will be a checkered flag coming out, whether you're on the track or off the track. You know that your vehicle will be on a trailer or a truck heading back <laughs> to the garage or factory. That you do know. That's the only certainty. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The rest is up to Murphy. <laughs> you hope Lady Luck's in the pits. Yeah. yeah. in the car for a fair amount of time this for this race yes. I, i've got to you know i've got to say that and it's been a a proper good race for him during the course of it so let's see how it's all going to turn out as they battle their way through so as our drivers work on their on their drive at the moment to see who climbs their way up the ladder uh, i honestly say i'm excited for this yeah fantastic racing we've seen so far and it's no surprise to see how much endurance Pink has. I mean, the last race did come back from a rally race. Um, it's not as long as he has. And I can in terms of pace so a lot of a deficit to make up for there and he looks bleak if that is the goal you have to give you um to to unlap yourself at least with a man as fast as three whites is gonna be quite a challenge the top three or rather top two for class d is daniel Rowe in the lead at the moment and we're looking at yuri swat in sixth place 
as far as position is concerned but second overall um in class d and we're looking for uh, class e there it's been an interesting chop and change around a couple of uh, casualties in class e uh, quite a bit of yeah. Running around trying to see how he could help at least mechanically to get the car um, back out out to the circuit. So they're studying, I suppose, at this point they've fallen back so much that the Janetta is unfortunately out of contention. Uh, but it is a bit of a studying exercise for them. At interesting uh, race not, not one that's uh, super exciting for them but they have been putting in some great times so, Tim actually putting in his first podcast last night they won it like a zero and a half and then it's going to be this goes and crosses the line so Mikhail Potemba in 10th place 134 laps that car has done so far and uh, to give a, give a bit of an idea Street White in the Inter Africa Lamborghini has completed 157 laps uh, with Arnold Neveling on the same lap as him as 157. So there's a great bit of time going on for all the drivers trying to get a little bit quicker, trying to get those laps down. As he did point out, that Andrew Rackshaw is out in uh, 16th place. They're still circulating at the moment, but 71 laps completed by that car. Then Lord Jr. is actually that up here. Class E, Morgan Rude, Ford, and Mazda. Yeah, yeah. So you've now got Ben Morgan Rude Jr. in the Morgan Rood, Ford, and Mazda car. <laughs> the work has been done. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> she whiskers. <laughs> they managed to get it's the magic. car out. Nice to see. So whatever was the problem, whatever was the reason they had to get get it uh, sorted out, they got it back out and they got it going once again, which is great to see. And this has to point into the tenacity of the teams, the the drivers, the families, because you, you, let's be honest, you move the car back into the pits. You're not going to only just have the teams grabbing the spanners to to help. You're going to have the families getting involved. You're going to have your third cousin removed grabbing a spanner (laughs) to try and help (laughs) you get that car (laughs) back (laughs) and going. So it's it's fantastic to see the guys all coming out there. Yes, as we said, it has the requirements uh, due to due to the course to occur at that point. And there's nothing else to get those cars out of the uh, as bad as they've done. But the guys are like cars going what is the like of this four hour rate that will just around the of the S A E. National Championship, might I add. Zero on your points. Yeah, and quite the opposite of zeros on points at the front end of the championship. Um, Stradale Mercedes looking at 93 points in total at the moment. Um, n- not uh, taking into account the current position or results. So this is as far as Swap Corps round and Red Star are concerned, this is round three of the endurance. And after that, it's going to be a, li- a little bit different. But at the moment, they look at 93 points 
at the head of the championship. BBR Racing in second place, 88 points. There's only five points in between them. Now, while uh, Stewie White's Lamborghini, um, the Inter Africa Racing Lamborghini, is a fantastic job at the moment, so far off uh, the mark, getting in a Lot of that. I mean, so, um, 43 points. It's a long way off to that category. They've had most of the people not looking at the same But the real, the swap fight, the first fight has been between BBR Racing and Stradale, and they'll be looking closely at their results to make sure that they have a strong finish. And that, as it stands, it looks like it's going to happen with Hink Latakhan in fourth place. It's going to get a decent points haul if um, things finish as they stand. And they'd be very happy with that. But to continue running you down the order there, in third place, so we had first place uh, with Stradale Mercedes with 93 points. Second place is BBR Racing with 88. Third place, VW Motorsports, uh, Daniel Rowe, with 64 points, so there's quite a gulf there between the two, um, understandably so. Dolphin Racing. Now, it's a constant guest game of who's going to be able to do it. Now, we also need to take the arbitrator to play, because as they can close to Who's pulled up to the end and who still needs to pit yeah. with the remaining 40 minutes of the race? All your planning got thrown out. Remember, they spent quite some time behind the safety car at one point, over 20 odd minutes behind the safety car. And that also, this fuel was used, but now that you've played out, has it gone in the wrong way? And now, I'm going to go the wrong way. That's flashing back. Oh, that's another. That is James Speakman, who three days ago landed in South Africa, might I add. So, this is his first time around the circuit, first time in South Africa, three days ago, comes in, brand spanking new car to the SAE series and um, well talk about getting thrown into the fire yeah and we've only seen him go off once and it, it's that very instant we just saw now it's very impressive very impressive stuff from James Sweetman and he seems to recover it very, uh, fairly well uh, filing back in there in the mix with the Super Cup Polos so not too much trouble hasn't lost his third place position either and is is Seems to be back in in and there's nothing there's nothing too bad that's happening to the car. I just want to point out that James uh, that is a uh, yeah, the guys get to utilize uh, LMP3s. They get to utilize GT3s. Uh, it, so cost a lot of touring cars. That will come into play with the different Michelin pilot challenges that are around, which is more of a very well experienced driver and the race car as well. Multiple championships over the course of the racing career. Yeah. Started at a fairly young age as well to get into the fight. And really showing up. Really an honor to have a fight for James Cummings. And a part of this amazing time. A show off such as a car. It's being presented. And hopefully we get to see more of those cars coming through. As I said, it's uh, just slightly out under an LMP3 spec car, yes. uh, which is a Lamar Prototype 3, uh, which is more of a, an open division. If I can put it in a South African terms, uh, the LMP3s are much like your, v your, your, your VWs. It's your entry level into sports car racing. Gotcha. You get to have a bit of fun, and you get to have a bit of fun in multi-class racing. Then from LMP3, the guys graduate into the LMP2 classes, uh, and 
that's also the word it was a family company. Like with that, we graduated with the LDNA to LDNA, uh, and previously it was the LDNA one as well. So that's, that's the kind of stepping stone. Not only the cross, it was quite a lot of people that was, but it's not going to be good, 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 it might be lost in the future. I suspect it was Ben Morgan Rick Jr. Uh, he's the only remaining white uh, class E car, I believe. No, I'm not the mayor. No, the mayor. The mayor. EPL Adam uh, uh, That's, we, we that's would, Morgan Rick with the lines. With the lines? Yes. Okay. But one of the cars has a flashing light, a blue and, <laughs> blue and red flashing light on them, and I didn't see the flashing light on that one. So, so that might be the PPL yeah. group and an adept yeah. that's that's got that. Yeah. So little additions that the guys make to cars, and to it's something I do uh, appreciate. We have seen it before, where the guys add a little light bar or a little LED strip just to show off what car there it is. It does make it easier to identify the cars, especially for pit crews, uh, because you're trying to see where your drivers are out of the circuit. Having a little LED light bar or a uh, you know, just something to identify your car as something different. Take, uh, one thing to take a look at, the Juno is a is a very good one to show for that because on the stem of the review mirror, the center review mirror, there is a little thing that's still there. And looking at the the two supercar polos there, as much as they're close together, they're quite far apart. At least as far as how much they've achieved and the strides they've made. I mean, if you're looking at the amount of laps achieved for one, they're uh, equally 154. But the gap between them, one lap or so, um, or just shy of a lap actually between them. So a lot of work has been done for, from Daniel Rowe in particular to catch up to Yuri Swat. So I believe it was a pit stop that uh, negated the initial deficit that there was between the two. I think there were two or three laps in between them at the time when Yuri stepped into the saddle and his pit stop, I suppose, um, uh, neutralized that. And Daniel Rowe... Kind of pissed, but... In class D between those two polos. Yeah, I'd keep an eye on Daniel Rowe trying to close down that gap uh, to your likes. Uh, sorry, Yuri Swart actually yeah. uh, is trying to close down the gap to Daniel Rowe. With uh, Byron Mitchell and Peter van der Spey. Little stem going and glowing. Uh, it's just something, talk about ingenuity. Uh, it's more of practicality. Because if you can't see your car as they come past, yeah. uh, you, well, you can miss out when they come into the pits because, oh, well, you think it's another pair of headlights coming at you and <laughs> turns out as the driver frantically waving because he's just run out of juice and needs a little bit of energy. They put it high up over the rear uh, wheels and just go kind of point out their head. Yeah, they put it on one side, the left or the right, depending on where the ball is, just to identify them. There's also one of the cars that is uh, either the PPL or Adams. So, LinkedIn, and I think Graham Nathan, who's sitting looking at the car, he's got his helmet at the ready will be jumping into the car. So Graham Nathan saying, listen, Daniel, thank you very much for all your hard work, buddy, uh, but I want to drive again. It's time. It's time. And I like how you see the distance where he's standing, very deliberate and very, I suppose, 
um, aware of the safety procedures as well. I mean, you'd expect that he'd be a lot closer to the car, uh, c- considering the fact that he may be stepping into the saddle. But it looks like Daniel no. is taking his sweet time. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. No, there is no driver change. Yeah. Looking at that, that's actually just one of the mechanics. Because I can see the he's got the spanner. Bo- he's, he's got, got the, the spanner language of Graham Nathan. He absolutely, he does. The, I, I absolutely oh. was convinced that was Graham Nathan. One of the backdrafts. Uh, I think it was uh, Pretorius there. It's Baron Pretorius at the moment. Went a bit awry there under the pressure of that PPLE, that the PPLE car. Yes, it is. No, that's the that's the Morgan Rude one. It's Morgan Rude. It looks like Baron also has a bit of a flashlight. Did you see that? It was the rear left of his car. Uh, I also yeah. see that the rear left tail light isn't yeah. working, so maybe there's that's a why. loose fuse somewhere. Yeah. Uh, that it's every kind of jarring at this point. So. Uh, yeah, these are guys frantically putting on the tires, and I take my heart out to the tire changes here because, much yeah. like what we saw with the GT4s, uh, we've got the same type of thing going on with our Super Cup because it's not just one wheel nut. No, no, yeah. you have to go through four wheel nuts. Uh, sorry, four to five wheel nuts. You have to go one, two, oh, three, four, wow. five. And that is such a tedious yeah, process yeah. to go and do. Considering the pace you want to, you prefer to be going at, geez, it must be it must really create your skin to have to go through that. Daniel Roll back in, and not the driver change we thought it was, um, but it's also a testament to how kitted up and safely dressed <laughs> the mechanics are. You'd mistake them for one of the racing drivers. Well, that's uh, that's VW Motorsport. Yeah, you got to look professional. Professionalism. Got to do it, make it right, and that's exactly what they're doing. But Daniel Roll back out on the circuit. So, uh, yeah, Graham Nath- oh. Well, just taking a look, actually, Graham Nathan is on the timing system, so I, I do think there might have been a change for driver. But we missed it. We, we missed never it. caught it on camera. So, yeah, most probably that uh, we missed that oh, Graham okay. Nathan. Uh, so we weren't too wrong. We're, too we, wrong. we're just we looking just, at the wrong side. Yeah. You apologize. But at the same time, you're as tall as Graham Nathan. So I just want to point out that Graham Nathan, Daniel Rowe, both the tallest people exactly. in the world that you can see. It exactly. looks like we just found the mechanic that fits the same height. On the flip side, to that mechanic, if you're looking for sign, this is it, bro. This is your sign. <laughs> do, do something, brother. Get into a race car. Uh, answer your calling. <laughs> as, as per the commentary, a uh, couple of rides still going. fantastic scenes there just look, looking at the nova it just does not get old seeing the rear of that nova going side by side there it's fantastic down the main straight but um, yeah they've held their own i think yeah. i'm period with from around the world and to you guys a big welcome also to the guys that are watching this after the events happen thank you for sticking around glad to have you guys here going and enjoying the race here in Spanish. but it is pretty fast and it's at night it has cooled down here at Becca you guys are really having a huge lot of fun it's going as much as the was during the course of our Thursday Friday and even early hours on Saturday you can see the front end of that back off 
have this one. But it's just always such a sight to see, but at the same time, it's not quite a sight to feel <laughs> when you're in the car and something bottoming it out. That is the reason I'm talking about spoilers, stuff spoilers, using the curve more confidently than any other car. And imagine they're a bit more confident, usually to begin with. It might feel like a rough type of music, but this is the lowest. So, the thing with the, like the, the Super, the super Cup Polos, yeah. they've got a slightly a higher ride height yes. which allows them to go over yes. the curbing. Yes. Second to that is they might actually be running very stiff suspension. So even a thump over the curb does feel like a punch in the kidneys. Where a lower car, you're going to be bottoming out, and that's when the whole, not only the ride height is very, very low, but the entire ride height on the ride height the pull them closer to the ground and that's actually how the tunnels work and uh, back in the early days of the early 90s and, and 70s so the cars got closer and closer to the ground they had these massive tunnels which is essentially an inverted plane wing under it where air was flowing closer to the, road, to the ground it means less air is escaping off the side and more that you're channeling in through the gap Faster it goes, creates more suction, gets you down to the ground. Great. The problem is, like this, is quite undulation, it's a constant impact. And if anyone wants to know what those sort of ups look like in a car, they'll go on board with any Formula One and see how they porpoise, because that's the same yeah. effect that's yeah. coming into play. Yeah. And that was the aerodynamics chapter of Steve Koenig, the Motorsport Encyclopedia, in case you just tuned in and you weren't aware what was going on. <laughs> but a uh, fantastic bit of information there, Steve. And it makes sense because you can you can also see the polos actually getting their rear polos on the inside with uh, lifting up. And our own victorious proof usually fights for trying to maintain the loss of the space. Um, him against the LED. And as it stands in class E, the leaders of class E, John Paul Brenner in number two, Philip Mayer um, in second place there, Kilo Ulamisa in third place, in fourth place, in fourth place, in fifth. Brian Pretorius is um, last place in the so John Brian Pretorius is in sixth place, rather, in Class E, and Ben Morgan Jr. trying to work his way up and recover a lot of lost time. And fortunately for them, they were able to work their way around the problem that they had, which pretty much um, saw the car beast and around that. Out of spot at moment, yeah. And the recovery stories BBR by 911 Porsche versus the backdrops is very quick, evident to see how long ago one car was. All go down the home straight and still white, absolutely something is his body and taking his advantage, of course, of that deficit between themselves. And the uh, Mercedes aim with Alan Miller. There's a one lap gap right at the front of the entire class of the overall race, uh, and between him and Arnold, Arnold Neveling in second place. So there's quite something that the, the, the Stradale Motorsport team seem to be working over there that's had them fall back so significantly. But in third place overall is James Sweetman, in that Nova saw had explosion onto the grass. Of it. You know, it's, it's been an incredible four hours so far. And the two main models have a huge amount of effort out there. And uh, lots of work being done on the going uh infinite growing pains for certain cars, maybe some adjustments that 
went a little bit too far the one way, it's like you're working on a car race, and you, you, you drive it and you're turning it a little bit too far, or you, you're changing it too much and you go a little bit too far to the right hand side instead of the left, and it lands up with a bit of an issue. But the guys have been putting on a fantastic job, which is always great to see. And I, I've just really, really been enjoying this, this four hour. It did reach a, an earlier point where guys were having a bit of a time. During the course, one in, in the first hour, half and half, and the second one uh, in towards the uh, over the just before the two hour mark before the half hour. So it will. It's going to be interesting to see how it all works out, how the guys are going to figure out what they're going to do. But um, yeah, it's always great to see. But just one thing to, for the guys to take a look over the magazines uh, with the, the SAE. Out, read it, and uh, out. Yeah, good to know. We're running for guys the track. I mean, bring a little bit of the you'll yeah. see a glint in the eye of, of some people go and bring up. They, they yeah. do go and say, Wow, thanks for taking interest. In it. That's one thing I love to see. These different cars, I'm going to End of a race. We don't have a chance to do mechanics uh, before in. They have all the different stories that tell you about the cars, they tell you about the work behind the scenes. And uh, if you are interested in the mechanics, you can get a lot of the most important behind the scenes. Go and have a chat to the guys. Even do yourself a favor, go and have a chat to the officials because there's plenty of training out there that you can join in behind the scenes with. And be a part of everything. If you're a photographer and you want to get involved with the media, uh, well, photography or videography, you love racing, I have a chat to the photographers out there. Everyone wants to talk. They want to share the knowledge, pass it on. And you, know, you get some really fun stories out of it, to be honest. Pretty much, pretty much uh, that, that wall, that invisible wall. It doesn't exist, and it shocks. I've seen the shock in people's faces when they actually can walk um, and, and see the cars in the metal, walk the drivers in, in the flesh. Actually, see, oh, these are actually human people. They take photos with them. <laughs> they can sign my autographs, etc., etc. So it's um, it's always that environment out on the circuit and being physically there. There's just nothing like it. It's so electric, and it's so also very humbling to actually get to experience the human side of it and just see how close knit the community is. And it's it's exactly how you get involved. Just walk up. a little bit of feedback. A lot of people look at these cars and say, oh, I'm going to close to them. It's like a hybrid area like F1 where you can't get close to the cars. You're going to have to look from the distance with binoculars at them. And oh, no, it's is. actually here yeah. at Aldo Scribanti. You want to, you know, go walk up. You can get a photo right next to the Lamborghini. Get some, uh, get some signatures and get yourself going. So as the guys make their way through here at Aldo Scribanti, Honestly, fantastic. I do want to shout out on a big thank you to all our officials, marshals, medical team that have been there from the early hours of the morning and into the late hours of the evening. And how long for that? Our marshals have been working tremendously hard now. They're uh, going with it. And I'm not sure if that department. Oh, I think it's the record of this. I was thinking, oh, and the traditions. I also got a couple of calls in. I saw the safety guard throwing one of the back. A lot of work has been put in by the safety guard. 
middle part of the waist, but the first part is the second half of the waist. All the work is done by the skin provider. Okay, off high wall for a lot. Polo change gears and flames coming out of the exhaust is fantastic. It just never gets old. All right, never gets old. So, bit of information okay. from David going and giving us a big thank you to David Lipper. I love him. I absolutely love him because uh, as I said, you can go and find information no matter where he is. So, Koenig always says he loves McLaren and David. He's quite a this thing that takes photos of the internet, that takes amazing photos of the internet, they make a good information past the lifetime uh, of that BDR racing uh, Porsche 992 going and having fun. And uh, uh, it had a repair brake to the So they had to be dumped by Ben Morganrood and had a high speed spin. That caused the leak. So a slight bit of contact caused a slight bit of uh, damage to the car in terms of a brake fluid leak. So at least they were able to get that out and going. Not quite what you want to have, but under these conditions, the cars are racing so close to them, the doors closing on top of the One does occur out on a circuit, and it is racing. They are lying fourth overall and uh, fourth past A. Maybe the points for the championship. That's something I do want to do. It highlights the experience. Yeah, valuable signals being on down at ground level, at ground zero, where we're quite a few meters too high above the deep the altitude above the action. It's happening to absolutely everything. Very At the moment, the most obvious information is someone who has absolutely stamped their authority on this race quite out. Just going down the break. He's paying to the top on the school right where he's paying. Run out of the field as he's going to be leading up across the game. And he hit across the A's. He swat across the A's. Trump called Brian in the first place to the cross. He, um, the Favorites. I think that is the, the, the most close, close to our heart. But all of these buses, so throw everything you've got at it. Must be a tech car. Out of the country, they uh, uh, the moving rhythm come back from spraying great contact. I was at the goal at the moment, and as well as uh, a couple that unfortunately fell away. Um, I do want to point out that uh, we've got Comfort Viner out leading the car. Wright Motorsports is 13th overall in the national overall championship. So for a Class E car, they're doing well. So 13th overall as a team. But Jean -Paul, uh, Jean Paul Briner, I moved down my list, is also running first in India performance. So you want to talk about a weekend going this way? Well, DJ put in a really decent description there. the are four points in the index of performance championship. Uh, Daniel Rowe in second place with four points, and there at uh, the head with 75 points so four points in between them it's very closely fought so it's going to be a team effort there to try and get ahead but at the moment daniel rowe is in seventh place at 
trailing stars. Back onto the pits, there was the driver change, didn't get to see the entire process, but I think it's still screwed right in the car. Uh, based on that pull away alone, I can guarantee that was screwed wide. The only person I know that will stand on the throttle that hard and do a burnout on the way, I, I, I think has to be screwed wide because I. I I know Latek is a, a bit of a gentleman when he comes out. He he does okay. Let's get the car out. Precision. And let's try. So so Latek has got the the scalpel, whereas three white. Oh, three white. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, three white paint for at this point. It goes out. It's an absolutely person. Puts in the work, goes as fast as he can, takes all the risk in the world, getting his way right immediately when he's part from the calibre of our overseas profession when you represent him in South Africa flag, you to have that bit between your teeth and go. And I think it's a huge pairing up in the car, both of them have worked so well in one another, and looking around James Stephen, who is uh, out in third place. So, you know, getting past that Nova. Uh, for the Just for Sleep team. I still love that team name. Honestly, it's one of the cool ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the Just for Sleep in the Nova Proto NP0. There goes the NP race. He's going out of the pits. And out. 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 Who's saving the fuel? Who's saving the fuel? The whole thing is important. Trying to get in the pit. That moment is not leaning your head in the direction of the fuel needle moves. I think we're at that point now. We've got a lid proof your butt. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how many of you can catch it. Wait. The closing phase almost been an amazing day of this. Fantastic. Just under 10 minutes remaining. I see. Oh. That car peeling into the pit. Oh, I missed who that was. It looks like one of the cars is getting in there. Um, it might have been a Stradley Motorsport. Could be wrong because obviously they're in tow, um, in the tow of Stewie White in that number 25 Lamborghini. So they, they're obviously perhaps on the same pace and on the same stride would also want to catch up and um, have their pits there. But it's 50 foot there, not too far. Yeah, a lot has happened at the moment. Um, and you're going to. Oh, I, do, I, I don't think this Bali would have been uh, only 22 seconds behind Stuart White at the moment. He's really close to the ground. That being said, here he comes out. This is the next day. Yes, it is. is. So you were right. So the Stuart keeps going and. Uh, Putting their Mercedes AMG GT3 and getting themselves all sorted out and back out onto the track it is going to drop them a little bit down the order, but that does allow James Sweetman to start closing up the gap. Uh, unfortunately, the Just for Sleep team are down by four laps, but see that Arnold Corbin was trying to come back bring that number a little bit down and the race at in the long run. Eight minutes remaining is effectively eight left. How many times can we unlock ourselves now and the four of the left is the stories background. How the race brings a lot of Amazing with the, yeah, with the Janetta, that was uh, quite interesting. They overcome something, something that seemed quite challenging technically to them. I'm um, having to work on the top of the engine there. Andrew Rack Stroll standing. Uh, standing. Uh, the Rover. 
you two to drive me again. Uh, I think I'll have a chat to you, just he's helping out a little bit on the car. I think I'll have a chat to this one. But once the race happens, I'm not going to give away too many, uh, <laughs> too many details, but uh, I'd love to just get a bit of feedback of how that car has performed. It's, it's really done a fantastic job. The Just for Sleep team really been putting in a, a good substantial amount of work to get that car going. But it is one in two, two in white, all of the down. That is a really close down to Lyra, but when you've got a piece of paper, you can actually do it in the car race. And of course, in Baltimore, has been off for quite some time. We did hear they ran into a bit of a problem uh, earlier on. And the theory is quite enough. It was a race. It was a race. It was a race. It was a race. And then going in and doing a fantastic job in this fire race. Peter van der Spey taking over from Byron Mitchell, uh, jumping back with that Juno Rail. Coming back at front of Daniel Road, space, getting over class speed, working with Graham Nathan. They put themselves into a positive position. I do want to point out that we got two class Ds in the top 10, and also we have got two class Es. Within the clock, uh, the top ten, yeah. uh, Mikhail Patemba, they've also done a, a fantastic job getting that clock at uh, most sport all been right up this at the moment. Right, I don't think this time Callum is available. Sorry, there's one for Brenner, but all been happy with this running line in ninth place and first to the class East. It has got the challenge of a Philip Maya trying to close down the gap after the. Draft race out. Do apologize. Yeah, make sure I get that right. Uh, they are running in in place at the moment. Uh, what do you work? Yeah, that is uh, that <laughs> that is a fair amount off yeah. the back of that car. Yeah. And uh, when it was, could that be the damage from I suspect, earlier on? I suspect so. Hence also the missing really. Um, no. No. Why is that? Uh, and there's uh, the big beam getting light. Because after the... No, it would, it would be because we, we only saw the... Yeah, we saw them much later on, but on the timing screen. So yeah, yeah. We, didn't, we didn't see the lines on the back. Yeah. So that is probably the, the same damage from the... It was the... Because they were actually parked on top of the tires, not flat on the ground. So they had to try and move that off from the top of the tires, down onto the ground, get it to Fantastic today. They've been called um, to the front line a number of times and they've delivered each and every time. It's fantastic. Nothing. Please, do it come up with some answers to the questions. Ladies, but we do not have anything um, that could actually make it point in. Today. You can see it in the body language of Father Angie um, at some point, but you know what, I've never seen it from the front of the front. Yeah, no, definitely it's been a fantastic run for all the guys really putting in the, the extreme amount of work to claw their way up to the top. It's been, it's been one of these races that from start to finish has been a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. For all involved, whether it be like the and and as we come closer and closer to our historic race uh, that's going on, and also has made the world of the We've seen some drivers do better in these conditions versus others, not all guys running away. 
grace to just put it in all of this thing. That's how I think it's going to happen. Well, I'm going to call it, but all this thing, I'm just saying, I don't know. I need to find a name for names, but here's a race to just ways to get past the challenges that are right next to you and those that time is going to present to you and they've done absolutely fantastically in overcoming that but Stewie White as emphatically as he entered the race he is about to finish it fantastic driving from the young man and of an international pedigree and feeling all that experience and well that's just under two minutes to go 201 laps of Aldo and uh, it's been a phenomenal, phenomenal run for every single one of these drivers. I'm just amazed at the, the amount of hard work that's gone into these drivers. 301 laps at a 2.4 kilometer circuit. I work on my calculator on that. Uh, that's 492.4 kilometers of in four hours done by our leading team the into trans africa uh going and having a fantastic well the into africa team of street white and zola Teka getting chased down by arnold neveling and uh shola Rangis, that uh that <laughs> big mighty mercedes of the stradalic and we still have fans Also go and follow us on all our social medias as well. If you're enjoying all the images, watch the great nice and bell notification icon on YouTube as well, just to be a part of all the upcoming action later in the year for this national tour that's going on of our SAGT and our SAE Championship, both be nationals for the guys to have a bit of fun. And we're in the area year round, fun and great and fun. Yeah. With the, our series as well, to have you guys around, you might have a big And, uh, well, I need to be very It's always good to get a little bit from the spectators. But we have officially hit the four hour mark, which we know in the chicken flag. We'll be coming out soon enough for our last. And here it is, round the four chicken flag. Africa, let me be Aaron Neveling in second place in Class A, and in third, James Sweet in another wonderful performance, a debuting car, the, the Nova of Just for Sleep, and as well as Hengler. Still managed to get some second place, and unfortunately, Mario Stex has uh, rather killed out of our race. Well, then moving on to our class, the first place going to Yuri Scott and Laura Hill of the KLX team, going and putting on a fantastic run. Second place going to Daniel Rowe and Graham Nathan of uh, the BW Motorsports in the Super Cup, doing a fantastic job. There is Morgan Root car pulling in. <laughs> How they got that car going, I have half, no idea. Half a Morgan Root car. There we go. Into the pits. Lift, a, lift, lift a bit of it out. There is Graham Nathan standing. That was Graham Nathan that we saw at the power bar. Because he does work on the cars. That was Graham Nathan. Graham Nathan is making sure that his car is not good. Of course, thank you. Right, what is the board? Well, Graham Nathan bringing it to the line. 
plan of the PPLE adept uh, PPLE group and adept team going and taking second place. Steve Clark rounding out in third place. Fikile Ulmosa going and having a bit of fun. The Kubeni team are going to be thoroughly excited with that result. Bono Pretoria is coming across the line and with the Pessy Racing, they are in fifth place. Gerard Bays in sixth place. We saw the Nash getting towed a little bit earlier. Uh, ben Morgan Rood Jr. coming across the line with a little bit of a broken car, but the Morgan Rood is able to take a great, beautiful shot. This is our PW uh, finishing up in second place. Having a great run. Daniel Rowe going to be climbing out of that car, finally stretching his legs. He's going to be happy. Also, good to see the Harp Motorsport team. They are crowding around the pull beam. Lots of high fives, lots of pats on the back going on there. Double checking the car at the same time, but just these smiles up and down the pits for all our drivers, for all the teams that have put in a huge amount of effort. Yeah, at Quebec, at Aldo Scribanti. And what did I tell you at the start? Aldo Scribanti will give you memories to remember yeah. of some amazing action. And once again, that's exactly what it's done. Legendary track, legendary series, all putting in a fantastic job. You know, what I will remember is I didn't take too much punishment from Murphy all this time around as much as i did say i did say a lot that you know this is going to be a smooth race not too much trouble and it did materialize at least for the last two hours of the race Steve, you can give me that it was fantastic racing not too much trouble the trouble that did come was overcome team managed to rebuild their cars an entire drive shaft was repaired by team pesty impressive the, the Morgan Riz recovered their car. Three white. was That's our one. And three over there, of course. This is our podium taking really good work over there. Harry Neverling in the end of the screen. He's managed to force that. You might not be able to see him unless the camera adjusts. But uh, fantastic bit of racing. Industry Dylan. I'm taking cloud, which a lot of work has gone down into making this even possible. Mr. Ranji's there as well as quite. Happy for that. You can yeah. see they got the signboard. He's oh, that's one thing. You go in and chat to Mr. Arangis, the head of the Spitali team. He's always got a smile on his face. He always has a great chat. Yeah. And considering that two of the cars that Spitali goes works on getting a second and third out there, and also I know they do work on to the, the Into Africa Lamborghini as well. I've got to say, it's been a fantastic job, but they're going to be extremely happy. That that Mercedes that originally was getting its engine sorted out at Red Star was shipped off to Germany to go and get the engine sorted out. Now getting it fixed up and back out onto the track and scoring a second place. Big smiles going on, Stu. Quite happy with these results. The whole team carrying on massive, massive smiles. Big hug amongst the teammates after a consistent effort between the two. Uh, I just love to see it. Those are those are magic moments yeah. in motorsport that you know, it just lives with you. It honestly lives with you, and it doesn't matter how far back you go. Generations will look at photos like that and go, "Wow!" You can feel the emotion of success that's gone through it, and even yeah. the guys further down the pits, knowing that you've finished up a successful four-hour endurance here at Aldo Scribanti for the third round of the SAE, and even for our SAGT for round five and round six, done and dusted, massive smiles are going to be there. Lots of guys will be going back, though, looking at their notes and trying to figure out how are they going to do it in the, the next time they go out. Will they be able to own the Lamborghini at the moment? Will the Fidali team be able to work out how to that? crucial half a second and will we start over going and blasting its way through time what it can do here in South Africa. No, I, I think they better watch out for that. Because considering the fact that the team working on the Nova is in second place and they managed to work well enough to get their own Mercedes AMG out on the podium as well as the car a, a debutante car with a debutant driver amongst the team in podium position. That Nova is going to be a force to be reckoned with, with the progress of the championship. Absolutely. No, it's, you know, this has been a wonderful day of racing. And uh, it's it's honestly, you know, live, living through the minutes and the moments of it is going to be incredible. But we're also going to be having our podium soon as well as Nadine will be going on for it. But uh, while, while this is happening, uh, Prince, if you could just sum up your, your, your thoughts of the day's racing 
and also our SAES? What would you say? I think uh, very reflective of that this is the pinnacle of South African racing. I mean, it was already an exciting build up with the one hour race that happened earlier on. Uh, but by the time flag fell or lights out went for the start of the four hour race, it was already very exciting to see a lot of the new entrants. Um, of course, very quickly, Michael Steven and um, the likes of Silvio Scribante, part of the pack there at that point in the race, the Ginetta looked fantastic having managed to set pole position. Of course, they were looking very strong at this phase of the race and their pace was absolutely right at there with the front runners, um, obviously not knowing what would happen to the car um, leading up into later into the race. It was very, very tight and compact at this point. All the GT3s just really squeezed into, into this little patch of tarmac and navigating certainly wasn't an easy thing. Staying on the circuit also seems to be a challenge um, as we, we find out a bit later on into the race. But at this point, of course, the Janetta opening up a gap. Um, uh, Stewie White, of course, staying abreast and, and keeping pace with the Janetta at that point. Ari Neverling, Charlotte Ranges at that point also had fantastic pace. Almost qualifying lap times some one or two of these were qualifying lap times that they were setting at this point in the race but at, at the early phase really was about spreading things out as quickly as possible and getting a rhythm because it's endurance whether it was the one hour sprint or the four hour they, it was it was all about for example your your miss money penny over there looked also very impressive involved in quite a battle um in the mid pack but isaac Spies <laughs> broke steve's heart and outbreak themselves and went into the tire wall. Luckily, he wasn't injured, but whew, the McLaren is going to take a panel beating and a half to get it um, recovered. That was the first safety car that we saw, and um, it took a bit of a, a bit of time for the recovery to happen. I think it was three laps or so, three or four laps, and that, of course, by sunset, um, the car was cleared up and we had a green flag racing once again. Yeah, it always just when I saw it, my my heart broke, and the second time seeing it just didn't make it any easier. Yeah. Uh, but when the re race already starting, heading into the sunset, we was into the closing moments of the SA GT round six and also for our one hour dash being done and dusted. The Janetta looking incredibly quick out there with Andrew Jackstraw behind the wheel as they were trying to battle it out with Stree White. But eventually that Janetta just had a couple of gremlins claw in, but the RDSA driver of Andrew Jackstraw tried getting that car around the line as quick as possible, but it was unfortunately the the car having those gremlins and having a problem the pull beam also landing up in the weeds just due to a little bit of rotation they were able to get it going once again but obviously the worry of what's happening uh you had andrew colthbert out breaking himself trying to figure out how to get past all these uh, slower cars these cars that are a lot slower than we saw the contact between the likes of aldo scribanti and marius jackson a little bit later on leaving bits of the Audi out on the, the wings, but far enough off a circuit that's not interference, but definitely sustaining some damage to that Audi R8 uh, GT3 car. It needs a bit of work. Charles Fisser, who was out for the one hour dash, showed off what the Super Cup can do and hopefully will be participating more in our D class. Uh, side by side battle, I mean, you've got generations there. Michael Steven, the, the older generation, showing off what he can do and now having Stuart White, the younger generation, powering his way through the Morgan Root car having a great time. You can see how much work those cars actually require. Sliding yeah. around the Nova, that's its debut endurance run out there for the Sleep Adjust team. The checkered flag coming out ultimately, and that was it for Michael Stephen taking first. Our first, uh, well, you know, sec I think this was our second of the safety cars, yeah. Trevor Graham landing up in the wall in turn one. Severe damage to the front of that car, unfortunately. Weren't able to get it going once again, but there was yeah. a quite a time of the safety car being out. The guys had to try and work themselves up to get going once again. Uh, the drivers had to try and figure out how to keep heat within the tires, keep heat in the brakes, keep focused on what's needed as the sun starts to set and things become a lot darker. You watch those corners disappear. Beautiful shot of all our cars coming through the rear tail lights. You can identify the cars going on. Yeah. But you can see that beautiful Quebec sun starting to set over the circuit of Aldo Scribanti, the legendary track. Racing resumed with everyone really putting their foot down. Zola de Teca, though, leaving the field soon as he had the option to and ran as fast as he can with the likes of the Stradali Mercedes team getting caught up behind some traffic yeah. before it needed to get past and uh, having to make up a fair amount of ground on the circuit. 
Yeah, I think the traffic really d- did uh, look like a couple of favors for a good chunk of that time after that safety car period where everyone is cooling their tires down and cooling their engines down, etc. But of course, the third safety car around the halfway, just past the halfway mark, um, uh, brought about by the Morgan Brit car, it was beached. It looked like from, from what we could tell, not a very good picture because it's so dark at that part of the circuit, not on the track itself, but the car was beached on, on the tires. It had to be firstly removed and put onto the ground, then towed onto the safety vehicle for it to be removed. And that period of time also stressed things out and gave us another, I don't know, it splits the race into thirds to, to, to three parts, so to speak, because of the duration of that. But um, very good job done with the safety marshals, of course, to recover the car. But again, it, it came back to the mental game. How long can the drivers keep themselves, um, um, I suppose, as focused enough as they need to be for the, by the time the restart comes, as we see here, for them to fully be on the pace once again. But at that point, um, the second GT3 car in position was the Latehan car at that point. Henk, I believe, was at the, at the, at the helm at that point. Um, Ari Neverling and Charles Ranges also were trying to, to recover their race at that point. They had nothing in front of them to really disturb their campaign. So they're trying to make up for a lot of the last time that Stewie White was making sure is a massive gap between those two GT3 cars. Yeah, and uh, there's the, the Mercedes as it powers its way through, bottoming out. You can see clipping the curb ever so slightly. And there's the BBR Racing Cup car also having a fantastic job out there, keeping it very clean and neat. Yeah. Uh, also, our Class E car at one point was leading, was the Xena Chemicals Nash uh, with Andrew Horn and Jail Base behind the wheel. And uh, also Mikhail Pasembo going and having a bit of fun in the field beam. Yeah. That was really on a dominating run as well, trying to make his way through the field. It was good to see the cars out there. The Hop Motorsports team really putting in a fair amount of work into that car. Not quite the race that they wanted, but still recovering great times as they clawed their way through the field. But as the race started to go on, you could see the wear and tear, not only on the drivers, but on the cars, as they managed to get the Janetta out and going off to a very, very lengthy pit stop getting warned that they are now the blue flag, and that's something that none of the team wanted to see, especially after such a dominating qualifying session where they started in the first place. Yeah, blue flag is not a term you'd want to associate the Janetta with, considering how well it started at the front leading um, the GT cars. But you've got the Xena 31 and Xena Chemicals 31 car um, beast on the side. But that was a splash and dash safety car, if I can say. Didn't last very long, didn't disturb the flow of the race. And at this point, this is where the race was at this end of the championship between Sudale Motorsports as well as that Inter Africa number 25 Lamborghini. And it's at that point, I think, uh, the number 25 sort of said, okay, I- I'm going to take over from here. Because at this point, it was raw pace from Stewie White. And as soon as he made um, light work of the car that was ahead of him, I think that was a class E car, and put some space in between himself and Stradale Motorsport, there really was no answer. And, and we quickly got information from um, um, Charlotte Ranges that there was a bit of an issue there as, as the Nova got acquainted with the grass. But uh, uh, James Sweetman recovered very well to get to peel back in front of the two Super Cup Polos. But a very close battle, of course, between the Super Cup Polos. Unfortunately, the VW Motorsport car lost quite a bit of time for the pit stop um, and, and, and had to sort of uh, uh, cede the lead to Yuri Swart, who had impressive pace. It was fast lap after fast lap when he was doing his stints, uh, but it, things evened themselves out, and VW managed to recover pretty well and finish ahead of um, Yuri Swart. Especially at this point in the race, there was a lot of impressive laps uh, put down by Daniel Rowe and Graham Nathan. Um, just got to correct you there. The Kalex actually finished in first ahead of the VW Sports. They, they managed to close up the distance, but ultimately on pit stops, uh, Corey Hill and uh, Yuri Spock managed to finish up first of the class yes, yes, uh, with the VW Motorsport in second. But they did close up a uh, one lap deficit eventually towards the end, but it was outright pace, as you said, that took the win. And that's exactly what Stuart White had. He, after a fantastic pit stop where they actually went and undercut the likes of the Stradali team right towards the end. It's, it really yeah, changed the whole did. thing because we thought that this would be the change until we saw the likes of Arnold Neveling coming in for that splash and dash and getting back out. But unfortunately, we're 22 seconds now changing into a 40 to 50 second gap uh, okay. to now work on maintenance mode at that point, while Stuart White continued to put in the incredible lap times. I still think it's because he can't see the braking markers. That's why he was doing low 57s into 56s with that Lamborghini. Ultimately, check a flag coming out, taking first place overall and first place in class goes to the Inter-Africa Lamborghini with amazing effort from the Stradale Mercedes 
uh, customer racing. They've also done a fantastic job getting that car. So here we are at the end of the race, and it's podium time. With Nadine. So I'm going to ask everybody, please put your hands together for our overall and Class A winners, Stuart, sorry, Stuart White and Colile Laclacla. Please come on up, guys. Come get your trophies and your champagne bubbles. Gentlemen. <laughs> well deserved. Well done, guys. In second place, we've got Arnold Neveling and Sharla Rangis. Put your hands together for them. Woo! Well done, guys. It was close. There was a nice edge for a while. Yeah, for a while. So just then they have all of the pace. In third place, all the way from the UK, we've got James Sweeten, Nick Adock, and Javi Davi Jubey. Come on up, guys. I'm sorry, I'm South African. But I promise you, I'll be <laughs> love you too. She puts it though. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please can I ask the drivers just to be careful of the cameramen and all the equipment to spray your bubbles? Spray each other, no problem. Later. And this is for your teams. Who is with Oh, this is for the teams. This is for the teams. Here we go, guys. Look here. Oh, you did it empty. Got it. Lovely. Thanks, guys. And another well done to you guys. And I'm sorry I pronounced your name wrong. I'll work on that. I promise. Sweet, no? Sweet. Adcock. Adcock. As in Adcock English. Okay. Got you. Okay. So now moving on to Class D. These guys are still getting really excited with the bubbles. But at least they're behind our cameraman for now. Sorry, I'm just waiting on the final results quickly. Okay, Class D. We have Cara Hill and Yuri Swart in first place. Woo! Guys, this is our only female driver and she has just... Congratulations, guys. Well done. Gets it out the park. Just deserved. Are oh, you starting to build your, your, your platform for Kilani? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Here we go. First place, in the middle there. Thank you. In the middle. And in second place, we've got Graham Nathan and Daniel Rowe. Give it up for them. Well done, guys. Yes, guys. Here we go. Great job. Well done. Well done. Thanks, Daniel. Sorry, I chopped your nose off the bits. Class E. 
looks like these guys have more fun spraying bubbles. Um, okay, and our Class E winners. Give it up for CJ Blackman and JP Briner. Briner, sorry. And in second place, we've got Mark Harvey, Philip Mayer, and Dean Wilson. Come on up, guys. Congratulations. Oh, look how cool that is, guys. Well done. Thank you very much. In third place, please give it up for Gavin Rook and Tony Martin. Well done, guys. And before you guys run away, the index of performance results in third place. In third place, give it up for Cara Hill. Cara! Third place, index of performance, well done. Well done, Yuri Swartz and Cara Hill. Index, third place, guys. Well done. Exceptional job. This is nice stuff here. And in second place, we've got Mark Harvey, Philip May, and Dean Wilson. Well done, guys. And finally, in first place for index of performance, give it up for CJ Blackman and JP Brenner. Yes, boys. What a show, and like we promised you, an action-packed action -packed day today. Um, thank you for coming through. To, for, uh, sorry, I'm a bit flustered, all the excitement. But yeah, that's the end of it. All of our winners have been announced. We look forward to seeing you at Swipe Corps. And please follow our social media uh, channels on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with the latest news. Thank you again. Thank you very much, and thanks for all the hard work, guys, from our side all the way to Johannesburg. Go have a chocolate milkshake.